In a college, there was a group of students gathered in a classroom. They were talking about a video that was popular on the internet. One of the students said the video was cool. It was a video about a winged man who was an insect. It looked like one of those mutated superheroes in action movies. Suchin grabbed the phone and said the video was weird. It was a video about a human with a pair of wings. To him, what good was a human with a pair of wings? It looked strange. He said to his friends, Suddenly a girl hugged him and kissed him. He was a popular guy in college with 5,000 Stargram followers. He enjoyed his college life and never did anything to compromise. Mihi called Sushan and asked him for lunch. They were all about to go for lunch. Suddenly Sushan felt uncomfortable, apologized to his friends for missing lunch, and walked back home on the way. He felt he was scavenging a barrel for a reason. Now he had a secret that he would never reveal to anyone. He got home and took off his shirt. He had a pair of wings on his back. He remembered how it started with one dragonfly. When he was in middle school, he sprayed insect repellent on the dragonfly and it turned to dust. He inhaled the dust he passed out and when he woke up, he had wings on his back. He was so scared he decided to overcome his fear. Sushen is in college now and wants to change. After this incident, he tucked his wings, did his hair and clothes and became friendly to everyone. He decided he couldn't let anyone know about the truth, especially Mihi. The doorbell rang and Mihi was at the door. She shouted to meet Sushin. Sushin, however, doesn't want to open the door. He doesn't want them to see each other. He asked her what she was doing here, and Mihi told him that she wanted to have a drink with him. Their friends told her Sushin's address. Sushin refused Mihi's invitation. He told Mihi to leave and leave her, but Mihi adamantly refused. She wanted to go out with Sushin. Then Mihi spoke to Sushin from behind the door and told him about their first memories of meeting. Hearing that, Sushan became sad. After this, Sushan came out and they went to the movies. He had many thoughts about his secret. Suddenly a man came into the room and told everyone to leave the building. A monster came into the room and killed everyone. Everyone panicked. The human in the form of a praying mantis was targeting Mihi. Mihi was pushed out of the building window. Sushan was so scared, he wanted to save Mihi, but he was so scared of the truth, but he didn't care, and jumped from the window to save Mihi. Everyone knew his secret now, and this was his desperate fight for survival. The crowd below the building saw him flying. Some of them photographed him as he saved Mihi from the monster. Mihi became startled and fainted when she saw him hovering and learned that he was a dragonfly. While he took Mihi to a nearby hospital, a mysterious girl came to the monster and warned him that they should stay out of sight. After one month, students are still talking about the incident at the movie theater. Suchin thought people didn't think like this. Strange news is serious, but still it happened again. His childhood memories hit him. He was an orphan and had no friends. Both then and now, it's the same story. He had no joy of life. He looked at his Stargram account. He was no longer popular. But there is still Mihi who will accompany him in any situation. Suchin still believed that. He went to the hospital to see her when he met her. Mihi was scared to see him and started screaming monsters. Suchin was very hurt. Suchin recalled their memories together and couldn't believe that now Mihi was scared of him. Mihi already didn't want to see him anymore. One month later, he was still alone and tried to commit suicide. He jumps off the building but starts floating and cursing the wings. Suddenly, a mysterious girl came and told him that there was a way to become a normal human again, which of course shocked him. A girl told him to fulfill some requirements that she told him about. The girl told him that the jungle juice contained in the insect spray could change his form. Then the girl took Sushan to the college nest campus. On the other side, a monster that attacked humans at the movie theater a while ago was seen. The half-monster-cured mantis man was being tied up by the guards. The monster saw Sushin. He took out his tongue and licked his lips, sensing that Sushin was a delicious meal. He was excited to find Sushin again. At the college nest campus, Sushin was very surprised to see many people like him. He didn't expect there to be such a place in Korea. Whether young or old, there were many species of half-monster humans. Everyone here was just like him who was infected. Although it was called a campus, it was actually a facility to protect people like them. Sukin was shocked to see this place. Everyone there had been infected by jungle juice. 
While wandering around the campus, he met an old man who was eating insects. It was strange to him. The man then saw Sushan and asked him who he was. Then the old man pulled up his shirt so that Sushan's dragonfly wings were visible. The old man said that Sushan didn't need to cover his wings. Then Sushan replied to the old man's words and said that his purpose here was to remove the dragonfly wings on his body and turned to leave the smiling man, saying that Sukin was a pathetic child. She met university professor Nest. He thanked her for bringing Suchin here. The professor then shows him how he became a normal human again. They start to see video clips from the university graduation ceremony. The last segment is the top graduate representing with a Cinderella promise. In the video, the monster drinks something and turns into a normal human, which makes him very surprised and asks the professor, what did the professor tell him they researched jungle juice and made a solution called Cinderella? Entomology professor John came to see professor Ma Dohyun and asked about enrollment. Everyone disappeared. Professor John Jai told the enrollment started like this, and everyone used their tactics to survive because in the end, the course enrollment of who is strong, he who wins will start. Su Chen was very curious what happened. The little honeybee boy comes to him and helps him. He tells him here enrollment is little different from normal colleges, but professors are hiding somewhere in the mountains, and they have to find them to enroll their courses. The professor distributes USB drives to the first 16 students who find them and plug them into laptops for enrollment. Both of them wish the best for each other. They were on their way to find their professor. Suchin started flying, and quickly he found the flag in the mountains while everyone was fighting with each other for the USB drive. He ignored them and flew to find Professor Doyle. Finally, he found him. The professor appreciated his fast flight strategy and gave him the last USB drive. He told him to go back to the lab and plug it into the laptop and warned him not to lose it. Suchin is very happy because he is one step closer to becoming a normal human being. Professor Doyon sends out a message that everyone who gets a USB drive is now everyone's target. A little honeybee boy comes and saves him from other students. Suchin thanks him, but he betrays him and steals his USB drive. He fights back to get his drive back. The student with the USB drive is done with enrollment. On the other hand, he was desperately fighting for his USB. He punched the honeybee boys harder. He fainted and threw his USB. He was trying very hard for his drive. Suddenly a girl came and took his drive. He was confused whether he should save the boy or chase the girl for his USB, but still, after all this, he didn't let the boy die. He got messed up after losing his USB and fainted. Suddenly, Professor Junjai woke him up, gave him a piece of paper, and said he should not forget to recycle it. Suchin was very sad as everything seems to be ending. He had many thoughts in his mind and started cursing him. He became angry and couldn't believe this situation. Professor John Jai told him to take care of this paper when his own life was chaotic. Then suddenly, he saw there was a USB in the fold of this paper. Professor Jun Jai reminded him there were only five minutes left for registration. Suchin started flying faster. Some students in the forest tried to stop him from enrollment. Practical entomology freshmen named Doishan and Hayes Young Cha saved Sushan from the students, as Professor Doyan already texted them to save him. Finally, Sushan reached at some time and enrolled himself as soon as he completed the enrollment. He received the class orientation notice immediately. The day wasn't over for him yet. University guard Nest kicked him out. He didn't have a student ID. At the same time, Park Heejin came with a student ID. As such, they both walked towards the lecture hall. Everyone in the class recognized Sushan as the dragonfly man from the cinema incident. Sushin teased her for what she had done a month ago. She told him it was very difficult for her and Park Heejin to erase all the evidence. Hewan stops him and says that and doesn't mind. She encourages him because he is great. One of the classmates from the last bench came and started fighting with Hayatio. He and his group intimidated and threatened everyone because he wanted to talk about valedictorian. He snatched their student ID so none of them could attend the class. Sushin stopped him, but one of the group mates hit him with a stick. After some time, he and Hyos Young were at Nest Park University Healthcare Center. Heejin told him that he will get his replacement ID, so he rested. On the other hand, Park Heejin asked the group to return their IDS. They started fighting with her and wanted to kill her, but in the end, when Sushin saved her.
The fight between Sushin and the leader of a group of monsters begins. Yuigen stops him from fighting in the lake when the opponent is muffled with water bugs, and he will drag him into the water and finish him off the opponent's man teasing him with the student ID. She tells him that they only want to fight with her because she is in the upper class. Last year, she told him this is his mess and you guys are dragged into it, so leave him. But Sushin refused to leave her alone while Hyas Young also joined them. He returned their ID. Sushin went to his room. He was very happy when he found out that Hyas Young was his roommate. Meanwhile, somewhere in the mountains, Gay and the woman were talking to the boy who lost about the professor's top student. She was angry at the boy for losing the fight and not killing Suchin. The she killed the man. Suchin wanted to know about his first-class professor, John Jai, told them that there was a small test done in Mark Count in the final class. Now everyone is suddenly in the open training ground of the university. Suchin was very surprised that everyone ran the Heijin telling her it was practical combat for insects, which was one of the required courses for their major. It taught them how to fight using their insect abilities. That was Professor Jun's subject. Professor John Jai said the first test is hide-and-seek game. Everyone has to save themselves to pass this subject. Who get caught will fail the exam the course starts. They all start running. While the mysterious girl comes to the remote underground sector of the campus and kills the guard to free her boss, the little honeybee boy comes to help. He accesses the room with the help of the professor's ID. She opens the door and frees the monster. The monster ate the honeybee boy. On the other hand, Suchin with Park Heejin and Haya Chiong ran for an hour. They were tired of rushing, telling the professor capturing most of the others while they were running away. They all failed the test Hyacian, telling them that they should be quiet because the professor is here. Fiona and another girl fall down while running. The professor is going to kill them, but in time, Suchin comes and stops the angry professor. He and Sushin make a deal if he hits him for an hour. He won't let anyone down, but if he fails to hit him, everything will be expelled. Sushin thinks of hitting, so he tries hard, but he can't touch Professor John. Professor Jai sees him using all his abilities. Although he doesn't know it, he thinks Professor is using his abilities. He told him that he is also a bug man, but he can't use his abilities. At this age, due to some side effects, he also tells him that he is disgusting, and this limits his abilities, so he needs to know his abilities. To use them before all this, Sukin had to accept the fact that he was an insect. He hits his memory and asks him how he can accept that the fact that he became a monster. Suddenly, Gayen started clapping, saying professors always have a certain talent, except for Suchan, everyone was very surprised to see him. He kicked Yona Hyacian, getting angry, but Gayen poisoned him. He fainted. Now, Suchan was very curious about what happened here. He felt everything was the same as the attack in the movie theater. While the monster came and injured Professor John Jai, Sushan felt the same feeling of helplessness. They took Hyus Young and left. He wanted to stop them, but the professor stopped him because they were dangerous. He told him that students can't fight without university permission. But Sushan disagreed and flew to save Heejin. Sushan starts a fight with the monster, but he is unable to defeat it as he has a sturdy frame and injures himself. The mysterious girl tells the monster to kill them as they need to leave before the nest pets find them. Meanwhile, Hyacian dreams that someone is calling his name and wakes him up. He opens his eyes, but he can't move his body. He saw like fighting with the girl and the monster, but he can't fight anymore because they are both very strong. They were going to kill him. Hyacian gathered all his strength and saved him. He caught him and started flying. They went so fast the girl told the monster it was a shame, but they had to move. The monster told him their smell was still lingering nearby so he could catch them. Suchin tells Hyus Young that he shouldn't do this. He tells him this is today's class lesson. When they can't defeat their opponent, they have to run away. He tells Sushin that's why they captured him because he is a monster and killed many people. They have a plan to capture him again. The smell of their monster close to him. Suddenly Sushan came from behind and tied the mysterious girl in twigs. He punches the monster and tells Hyus Young to take something that will cut his hard skeleton. He took the professor's saw. Suchan took it and was about to cut the monster. Suchan cut the monster one-handed with a saw. Yong was happy that their plan worked. The monster was angry and shouted how they dared to hunt him down. 
Suddenly, the saw stopped working. The monster picked it up and destroyed it. Now they both started fighting with the monster. At the same time, but they couldn't defeat it. The monster was going to kill Sushan, but suddenly, Professor Junjai came and saved him. Professor healed as he received treatment services from the nest. He told them that he was worried about them, but they handled the monster very well. Professor used his insect ability and punched the monster. Suchin sees smoke coming out of the professor. Professor tells her it's her true power and the jungle juice effect. He warned he could lose his power if he destroyed his ability. The only way he could prevent this was to truly master his powers as soon as he could. After some time, they returned to the campus safely as young upgrades, or at the healthcare center they talked about Gay and where he would be. Now at night, Hyatian stepped towards the forest. Gayan caught him and manipulated him, but suddenly Professor John Jai came and saved him from his Sushan followed Hyatian into the forest and found there he was with Professor John Jai. He sees there is a gam. He sees the professor talking to him about the past because they both know each other. She is a student of Professor Nest gets angry at his nonsense and hits her. Suddenly Professor Doyen Ma comes and stops them. Professor John tells him that she is working for someone. Professor Doyen tells him that it would be wiser to let her go and track her down to find the real culprit, and then she says she will retreat now and come again and then kill them all. Then suddenly he saw such an income with the highest healing they all returned to the campus. On the way, Professor June told him that he didn't tell anyone what happened there, and to keep it a secret, he agreed on one condition that he would teach him how to master his complex because he wanted to become stronger. A few days later, everyone was eating in the cafeteria, and Hugin pointed out a girl named Noah. She helps in the research by going to the lab instead of class and practicing in various group assignment exams from today. Suchin Hyos, Young Park Heejin, and Dowa are in the same group. They were going to finish their assignment. After a few days, the assistant teacher came to Professor John Jay's room and told him that Grupp was working on the assignment. But it was an emergency and one of them died in the lecture hall. Professor John Jay tells everyone about the assignment. Task is they have to find the spray bottle, which is the source of Cinderella solution. They all have to find it in the province. If the group found the bottle, they would get extra points. They started to find the highest bottle Yong and formed a team and looked for their own partner and the disrespectful partner so that it would help them to cover more ground, he said big, and they would all get extra points. Since he had the bottle in his apartment, they both went there, but someone had broken into his apartment and stole the bottle. He became very sad. She told him that it was fine. And let's start looking around the city they searched online and in stores. But they didn't find a single bottle they were tired. He wanted to be normal again. She asked if it was for the girl or if she was his girlfriend. Suchin started laughing, and then he said, she was right. He wanted her again and wanted to be normal again. Then he thanked her. Suchin's phone rang. He picked up Hyacian very happy that he found a company that made jungle juice. He got a lot of bottles there. He sent their location, then went to the location. The place was weird, they thought it was a trap, but they went inside the building and he found the bottles. Suddenly someone attacked Hejin and she was injured. Suchin was always alone. He lost his parents when he was born, then his grandmother died. He thought he would get used to saying goodbye, but he couldn't. He couldn't say goodbye to Hewitt Jim. He started fighting with the monster Tawny Earwig. He tried to punch him hard but failed to defeat him because he had a hard skeleton. The monster tells him that he is so powerful because he ate another insect man, it was like a treat. Had he ever eaten one, he told her that he was waiting for prey here, and he got it as a treat. Suchan became angry and once again started a fight, which he fought with him for some time. But the monster knocked him down repeatedly, but he didn't lose hope and once again tried to kill him with a trick, but failed the monster was about to kill him. Suddenly, Park Heejin came and defeated the monster. He used his complex and hit him with full power. The flashback of Park Heejin's life came. He was poor and living in a dark and small basement. She was only 17 years old and a student in high school. Her classmates grabbed her and made fun of her for their poverty. Suddenly, her brother Park Jeon Jin came and kicked the body that caught her. She was happy as her brother was always by her side. She went home, 
and saw her brother killing money, but they ran out of bug spray. Her brother suggested her let's buy the stuff. Jungle juice is people give good reviews and it kills all kinds of insects. Her brother took care of in every way she wanted she could go to college, but her brother died of exhaustion and left her alone. She felt poverty took her brother. The only ray of light in her life her classmates saw her crying and wanted revenge for their humiliation they threw many cockroaches. In H basement, she used bug spray to kill them and how she became a bug woman. Sushin asked Park Heejin about her wound. She replied she was fine. She is agile and recovers herself. The monster teased her about her poverty. They both started fighting again, but this time the monster killed her with full force. Sukun was numb by seeing this as he lost her. He became angry. Sushin stood up his wings, became light as it was part of his monster complex. Surprised as he never ate anyone, he thought there was another way to evolve and become stronger without feeding. He was happy that now he was getting more nutrients by eating. Sushan was much stronger now. After subconsciously using his ability, he attacked the monster and almost knocked it down. The monster is frightened by Sushan's strength. He hits him again and cuts his arm to pieces, while a flashback begins where Professor John Jai taught his physical training and defense mechanisms. This state, he becomes stronger now the monster curses himself for choosing the wrong prey. He pleads for his life like that and cuts it into pieces and kills it. After killing the monster, he fainted. Suddenly a mysterious man came. He found this, and as attractive as gay and sin, he wanted to keep Suchin for herself, not for Nest, but he left him. As the pest Nest tracks the pest signal coming to the building, they see Sushan coming and asking for help. As he is not breathing at the entrance of the campus, Sushan is holding Huijin in his arms. Professor John Jai came there and asked what happened there. He started to scold him suddenly. Professor Han Yongyu came and asked the professor not to be rude to him and keep his temper. He came to check Huichen, he said Suchan to take him down. Suddenly Professor Yu's hand started glowing. He asked her what he was doing. The assistant professor tells him that he has a rare complex. He says that Professor Yu has healing powers. He asks him if that means he can bring him back to life, the professor tells him. He can take him back because his complex allows him to heal wounds. He apologized to him that Park Heejin was dead. He tells the medical staff to bring her body. Suchin starts crying and hugging her suddenly he feels that she is breathing. Heejin was a cockroach woman that she shed her old broken parts and grew into an adult form from the light of his homecoming. He was very happy that she was okay and hugged her tightly. At the warehouse, he told him a boy with lavender hair color who told them about the warehouse, while a lavender-haired boy named Rancher came to the lab and told the lab assistant that he saw a boy who was stronger than everyone, he said that his spies were at that nest school. Time for fun. Art professor John Jay told the students that none of them managed to find a single bottle of jungle juice. In acquiring more jungle juice, he said it was all because there was another force of bug people who were out to collect jungle juice for themselves. They have been attacking random people with sprays and turning them into bug people without their knowledge. Threatening the community, he said. From now on, they will be given tasks that focus on real combat. He tells them that they all know what happened in the last task. They could get critical injuries, even death. He tells them that they will get a grade, which means high risk equals high. Again, he tells the students if they want to leave this subject, they can. But everyone wants to stay. He says that's it. For today in the nest, student orientation night begins. Everyone was enjoying and eating. Dohua was flirting with Hyatian. Suddenly a boy named Jun Hyung Lee came to Dohua and offered her a drink and took her out of the room like that and noticed something bad about the boy Jun Hyung tied up and misbehaved with her because he was unconscious, but at that moment came and stopped him. A breeder sent someone to snatch Dohua from the nest because she was a specimen he had raised for a long time. Meanwhile, Su Chin asks John Hyung what he is doing with her. His girlfriend John Hyung stops her. They both fight statistics. John Young uses his fur with spikes as his complex to defeat her. He told him Dohua will come with him because Nest is not the place for her once they leave. She will never come back. Su Chin tries to stop him but fails as he is stronger than her as he can also shoot her hair. On the other hand, everyone is enjoying the big orientation party and thinking of Su Chin and wants to ask him what happened that day. 
Hyacian comes in and says he hasn't seen Doha for an hour, he can't seem to find her. Then a random girl sitting nearby tells them a boy took her out while Sushin and Yunhilm were still fighting. He couldn't beat him. John Hyung injected him with poi like that and passed out. After a while, he opened his eyes in a dark room on his left side. A girl was sleeping. She was Dohua. Woke up. Sushin worried because they broke their curfew and also missed their class. He reproached Jen Hill, despite what Sushin disagreed with. After some time, a little baby girl named Hiram came and told them it was time for lunch. He asked where she took them. Noah told him it was the Angel Orphanage. Where she grew up, the children asked her questions about tales. She told them it was a toy, and ran away an old lady, the director of the Angel Orphanage, came and asked Sushin about sleeping. She washes his clothes, she tells him that Jun Hyung brought him and prayer here last night. She also tells him that Jan Yong and prayer grow in this orphanage, so that's why she didn't reject him. He asked about Doa's current life as he was surprised when she showed him her strange story. While the prayer recalled his memories and remembered how his father beat him, the old lady said to him that he should go back to the campus. Suddenly Yarim came and told Sushan to play with him. Giving his drawing book to him, the old lady and the caretaker are in the basement and start their experiment to turn Yarim into a human insect. On the way to the campus, Suchan notices something strange in Yarem's drawing book. He returns to the orphanage and goes to the basement. When he got there, he saw an old lady about to start some experiments. He stopped her. He was angry for destroying the lives of innocent children. A fight started between him and an old lady. She finds out that he is also a bug man. Suddenly, many bug men come. They all start sucking Suchan's blood while Doa is sitting in the room. Johnny Young comes with some stuff, though. She tells him that there are some strange vibes. She feels he tells her there is a lab in the basement that is turning those kids into bug men. She was shocked, she told him, if he remembered what they were like in their childhood. He was too fragile, and at that time, the only way to help him was to turn him into a bug man. He told her that she looks stronger, so it's also best for these poor kids to survive in this world. He said she should join him in this mission, because he serves someone who can make that world come true. Forget Nest. She was shocked after hearing this and hit him. Suchin was fighting for his life. The life of the old monster woman Yaram and her group of groupies, they began to attack. At the same time, they are all very fast, but she is faster than all and defeats them. While Dowa and Jen Hill were also fighting with each other, she refused to be part of his plan. She used her defense mechanism to defeat him, but failed because he had a hard skeleton. She defeated him very well. As the two of them were fighting, the lab assistant escaped with the Jerem in the cave. Bus started chasing them. He picked up the bus and hit it hard. She said if the kid is not in the bus, she will crush him in the bus again. Jun Hyun came and started a fight with him. He again beat him. He again told him it was the best thing for the orphanage kid to have this power, rather than having nothing. It was a harsh reality. She showed her fangs to him for the first time and bit him with it. He poisoned her enough to knock her out. Suddenly, just like that, Revenue Jun Hyung tells her that he doesn't expect that he can kill them all, but they both know very well how this fight will end. He tells him that he can't even touch him because of Su Chan's thirsty stinger, and Yan Hyung starts the fight. John Hyung challenges him that he can never beat him, but he does, and attacks him with full force. When he gets the glasses from the bus, they work like they protect his eyes from all the wind and dust and protect his eyes from anything burning. Now Sushan is holding him. He stabs him. John Hyung uses his fangs to poison him, but from a small distance, Sushan saves herself, he thinks, because of these fangs, she drops him and gets out. Jun Hyung tells him not to get in the way because he has a mission to accomplish. He tells her that he has no idea about how miserable one's life was in his childhood. It was hard for his mother to make ends meet. Some thugs killed his mom for money. He couldn't save her if I had the power at that time. He could have saved his mom. That's the truth. Life is a tragedy without any power. So now he wants to help all those kids by turning them into humans. Insect John Helmet used his stinger to kill them. Suchin ran up and covered Dowa. He told him that Noah developed a tolerance to his stinger. It would kill him. Not him in the end, it was here. And now Suchan is screaming and saying that this can't make the children happy. He is the one who put them in danger.
Yarim came and covered the prayer as Sushan's shield gathered her strength and strategy, and took up her goal of Suchan defeating Junhill. He came to Yarim and asked her if she was all right. He asked her about the wound on her back. She replied she was fine. She thanked him for saving her life. She said to Yarim she would go to the nest and tell them all about what happened and they would help her. Somehow she suddenly realized Noah wasn't here. He was shocked he went. He felt there was someone behind him. He turned his back on him but disappeared. He just listened to the voice of John Hyung telling him that he knew the voice was the rancher transporter. Suddenly they both saw him. He tells Jun Hyung that the breeder knows that he will fail to convince them, so that's why he sent him to bring Dohua back. He can tame her through feed training. John Hyung tells him he hasn't failed, he will convince her to join them, so just put her down and give her back to him, but he leaves her. He becomes sad because he lost Sushan and John Young's team to find Dowa. While she is tied up with a rope, the breeder tells him that he just wants her to be part of his time. He refused the rancher, then offered him food made of insect human flesh. Gay forced, fully tried to eat it to make him a monster because he knew once he ate it he would be addicted to this thing. As Injun Hill achieved in time and saved him. He saw Gay and Sin, and the lavender-haired male was here. He was shocked. Jun Hyung said Suchin prayer was stung on his neck, and they controlled him and turned him into his slave through Gay and Sin's ability. Jun Hyung was angry with the rancher and reminded him as he promised not to harm any orphanage. People breed or smile and said to him, before starting a fight, he should watch a video on video of little kids getting feed training. He said to him he can quickly foster them into amazing hunting dogs. John Hyong got angry and hit him with full force, but suddenly Noah blocked him as he was controlled by Gaia. He broke her fangs, though it was getting stronger due to the combination of her complex and Gain's complex Suchen, and helped her to stop Nu. but the breeder entangled her into a spiderweb somehow. She organized herself and attacked the breeder with full force. The rancher couldn't control her because she was so fast in attacking. He turned on the sprinkler's Suchen couldn't fly because the water weighed down her wings. The rancher blocked her breath by making water bubbles around her face she passed out, while Huijin met Sierra despite what attacked John Hill in a row. She can't defend herself anymore. Gayan is very happy because she amazingly used all her abilities. She said to Jun Hyung that he should give up because he can't save her anymore. Once he started feeding, he would lose his humanity. In the end, it didn't matter at all. The breeder told him that he would create a new world where only truly capable specimens remained. So they don't need to save humanity because there won't be any humans in the future. But he tried his last move to stop Nu from feeding with his stinger, but Gayan stopped his aim suddenly. Suhan came and grabbed the piece of meat. Suchan flew higher than where the breeder was unable to catch the breeder, telling him that he was not an expert in his abilities and couldn't beat him while coming to prayer. Jun Hyung taught him the trick of attacking him, reminding him of such action on his advice. And using his whole body as bullets for the attack, Suchan knew it was too risky, and he had to take down the breeder in one shot. Somehow he succeeded in this, but after some time the breeder came with more strength and straightened him in the aquarium. Suchan became panicked as there was no way out of the fishbowl. He was now a prisoner in the palm of a breeder's hand. The breeder told him that he would suffocate and pass out. And when you open your eyes and Noah would finish their training session, Suchin started screaming as he didn't want to become a monster. Suddenly, Park Heejin came and saved him. And surprised, Park Heejin told him that Agent Nest started the search as soon as he told the professor that you two were missing a few hours before Agent Nest was behind. Gan but suddenly disappeared. Agent reported to the school because he lost him, but luckily Agent saw you, a little girl with a jacket. She told me everything, now she was safe. Suddenly, Dowa attacked them. Suchin tells Park Heejin that they are controlling it with some kind of venom. A fight starts between Dowa and Huijin, while on the other hand, Breeder again binds him to his web directly supreme. Yong and Hyona come to defend his friends and Sin will kill them all. But in time, Professor John Jai comes gay and not expecting Professor John Jai here. Professor Jai tells him that he came here to end all this because he is interfering in the lives of his students. They both start a fight. The rancher tells Gayan that is enough. For today, they have to go back. The rancher, the transporter comes and escorts the rancher. Gayan tells the professor he was sent here for today because he sent Gayan away. 
Now she can take the orphan and jungle juice with her. The professor comes to know that she is the leader of the hidden army. Now he can track her. Professor with complex attack on him, there is so much heat spreading around. Suddenly the rancher became very big, like a giant centipede he said he was planning to eat. But he can wait a bit until next time because he has more things to take care of than he dug a tunnel and escaped. After that, everyone returned safely to the nest. According to the lab tests, Noah recovered quickly, and the other students went to another center, the board of directors at Nest. Ranged everything suck in, John Hilmer at the hospital Hyacian came in and started yelling at Jun Hill. Bella told Huygen that he had a funny story when he got drunk at orientation and fell asleep the next morning. He wakes up with Sushan, he starts smiling. Park Heejin gets sad and leaves the room. After some time, she comes to Sushan's room and asks if she slept with Noah. He became scared and in desperation explained the situation to him. He thanked her for always helping him. The next day, Professor's plan was to have a meeting with Professor John Jai and Professor Han Yong. You, on behalf of the dean, he tells Nest will actively pursue the breeder and his organization and prepare a full-scale war. He tells them that he got some information about them from Jun Hyung during the investigation. He shows them a video in the video he tells the investigators the breeder brought all the insect men he had prepared to the lab territory. Professor Ma said Professor John Jay to make a group of students investigate the lab's location in Black Island. On the other hand, Park Heejin and Suchin were eating at the restaurant he asked where the tallest young boy went. He told her he went to visit his parents. Suddenly Fiona and Dawn came there and made fun of them because they both thought they were dating. He will apply for some instruments that can make them stronger. They came to the lab and registered and asked the lab assistant if she could make special glasses for him. At home, the pet shop staff Guyan is angry at the breeder for not letting him fight with Professor John Jai he warned him. The breeder calms him down and makes a cup of tea for him. He thought he wanted to kill the professor and was more curious about what happened to him five years before the breeder and his carrier told Gayan and they would help him with anything. Meanwhile, Professor Junjai tells the class that there is a laboratory on Black Island named Pet Shop, where breeders put insect humans so the selected students will be disguised as tourists to find the high place. For this purpose, students will be selected through a group tournament as it is dangerous. The enemy territory of the winning group gets a grade in its final. After hearing this, everyone is excited. Suchin wants to win this group tournament with Huygen. Professor Jun tells them there are rules to play this tournament, and they have to follow them strictly. They were all divided into four teams, and each team had four members. The first match between Team and B they had to put up their flag, and their mission was to take off the other team's flag in Team A Suchan, and Hu Jin would help take the opposing team's flag, and Do Hua and Hyacian would protect their flag. They started the fight with Hyona and Dawn. Dawn was much stronger and attacked Suchan and Hu Jin very quickly. She was very surprised to see that their skills were like a mace to catch their prey, but they had a weak body. She wrapped the jacket straight to her. Dawn couldn't tear it with young Hyona came and used her silk thread and tied it with thread. Dante tells Yona if they handcuff one of them, then they will receive the location of their base. Suddenly, Park Heejin uses her weapon that looks like spikes of destruction on the legs of cockroaches. With the help of his weapon, she breaks the iron mace of Dawn. Suchin uses his complex to defeat Dawn and handcuff her after this Group B base he reveals it. Meanwhile in class, Professor analyzes their skills through videos. Fiona gets scared and runs away, but she slips and falls from the top of the mountain. Park Heejin saves her, but she takes advantage of her helpful nature and handcuffs her now. Team A's location is revealed. Now it's time to choose the opposing team's flag as the phone rings, and he takes Hyacian telling him that the team became their location and he can't save their flag anymore. He told him he thought they lost. Suddenly, Sushin saw the box and told him no, they didn't lose it. However, the professor noticed everything from class Sushan wanted to open the box, but Huijin stopped him. He told him that it's not young to handle it and keep it for future use. He was eliminated, so he was going back to the rest campus. We'll continue the game. On the other hand, Doa came in time and saved Flack. They fight starts between Doa and the opposing team member named Johanna. She has a rhinoceros beetle complex, 
Another member of the opposing team named Rita Huang comes to fight. She starts throwing her scales, which causes an allergic reaction on the skin, but her scales don't work because she has a hard skeleton villain who tries to destroy her. He started using his complex and beat her with force. He hit her again, but Rita came and saved her by using her defense mechanism. Meanwhile, Hyona ran towards her base to defend her, but it was game turn and such, and got the flag of the opposing team, Team 01. In class, everyone started talking about Group A's victory. Hayatsyong felt sad because he thought he didn't contribute that much to the victory. On the other hand, Group D won the match. He told her that Group D was amazing even though they sent a girl to the emergency room. A member of Group D named Chang Han Yu came and started talking to Grupa. She triggered Hayatian. As she knew his weak point, the final tournament started between Group and Group D member. Hana Sion used her complex on Group A before the match. He hypnotized the girls with his complex, as it only works on girls like surprised and sad at the same time half of the team had left as soon as they started. They tied the girls with flags, he said to Hyas Young, that he should go fight, but he disagreed and went to look for Team D, as he wanted to prove himself stronger, as he did nothing for his group in the last round. Suddenly, a member of Group D named Majin Gu came and started fighting with Hyasil. He hit and handcuffed him, Group D base was eliminated. Majin revealed he went to Group D base. There was nothing but weeds. He was surprised. Suddenly the earth exploded and he fell down. Shang Hun pulled him. He was very surprised to see how they did this. Yunji Jiang, another member of Group D, came. They all started fighting. He couldn't beat them suddenly. Blood started flowing from his eyes. He couldn't see anything. Group D did the same thing earlier with the girl professor warning him not to cause serious injuries. They beat Hyatian and handcuffed him. Suddenly, Sukin came at that moment and took the handcuffs. Ten minutes ago, Sushin saw Hyatian unlocking the location of Group D's basement, while the two girls were still knocked out thinking he should go to the location to help Hyatian. He opened the box and put on the special glasses he felt great because he saw everything so clearly. This morning, he came to the lab and got the glasses. The lab assistant told him the technician also added an additional function. These glasses have a hexagonal grating and a dial that helps enhance his compound vision. He pressed the dial as he saw everything clearly. He went at full speed to help Hyatian as he reached the base. He saw Haya Xiong as the injured Shang Hun used the fire ant complex to take him down. He sprayed fire which can damage eyes, but luckily Su Chan was wearing goggles which saved him. He hit her and almost knocked her down suddenly. Hana covered the cave from outside to make it dark. You can't see anything but Chan Hunkan as he is an ant. He thought he should go into the air first, but Yunji held him back. The fight started between them. The glasses helped him in the fight. As he saw everything clear in the darkness, he used his power and came out of the cave like that and beat Chang Han. He was knocked out. Hana and Hanji ran to keep the flag but failed. Su Chan got it. First, Tima wins the tournament. Professor says it's over. The tournament ends here. Suddenly, he realizes he left the young boy behind alone in the cave. While in the cave, Hyatian curses himself because he can't do anything for his group, and also for himself. Your professor came and did a check on him. He told him that he might have an effect for a while and congratulated him for winning. He was surprised and a little jealous because he never thought that Suchin could beat three opponents alone. Suchin comes up to him and asks if he's okay, but Professor John tells him to go back to the lecture hall now. The professor tells Hayes Young no matter how good he is, there is always someone better. He says the problem is he didn't even try. He doesn't understand this, Professor. June tells him that his class is here, he should get treatment and pack his things for the trip. At the dormitory, everyone is enjoying the party. Fiona tells Sushan and Park Heejin that she can make clothes for them after a few days they are all on Black Island looking for a lab. At the pet shop suddenly, they see Hyun Bin Ju as a teaching assistant. She came here for their safety at the dorm. He came and picked up some clothes for them as this was a gift from Fiona. She tells them that they have to change into the clothes provided at Black Island Beach. Everyone wore swimsuits to look like tourists, so no one could doubt them. Park Heejin felt uncomfortable in the suit, but Noah told her that she looked good. Like surprised to see his pious young son looking a little upset, he asked Yundin, why didn't they all come here to have fun? 
He replied that it was necessary for them to look normal and have fun, so that the pet shop employees couldn't find anything suspicious about them. Now they all went to the beach and had fun and started eating. Suchin noticed that someone was stalking them with a telescope they thought he could be an employee of the island, that the old man left after some time they all rested in the dorm after lunch to start the search tomorrow. Hyatian came fast, he went to the room and found that Hughes Young was not in the room while, on the other hand, an old man was sitting by the beach. Hyatian went to him and asked where the pet shop was, thought the old man. He was his grandson. A random man came to him and told him that he lost his memory and found every boy his grandson. He took the old man to his house and started cursing himself again. Suddenly, and found something strange in the telescope, and ran to find Hyatian while a boy came to Black Island as gay and called him. Pius Young was dreaming about his football career. He was betrayed there by his team members. He turned into a bug man and left his passion. He felt he was no good anymore. Suchin told Professor John that they don't want him in their team. Suddenly he opened his eyes and thanked God it was a dream. They continued their search and scouted in different parts of the island, but they found no clues. One day in the evening they all sat together. Doa missed Hyacian because he wasn't there while Hyacian saw an old man on the beach waiting for his grandson. He told her to go home as it was getting cold. She denies she is angry and starts scolding him. She comforts him and takes the old man. Oh, his house, he dropped it and left. Suddenly he realized that the old man had a smartphone, but the battery was low. He charged it and saw something very strange on the phone. He was shocked. He thought he needed to hurry and told the others, but there was a monster outside the house waiting for him. They started fighting now. He was sure Pet Shop was on this island while Dowa was waiting for Hyacian on the beach and suddenly strangers came. Their professor Jew told them Pet Shop fed someone with someone else's meat in the form of human insects, so these people had become monsters and had no humanity. He hoped they would never meet any of them, but if they did find them, the best thing they could do was to run. While Hyos Young was fighting with the monster, he was so strong that Hyos Young decided to run away with the evidence, but he realized the old man was alone. He went back to save the old man. On the other hand, Dowa wasn't in danger either. In the dorm, Hyunbin calls Hayes Young, but he left his phone in the dorm they both lost. The fight started again between Hyus Young and the monster he tried his best but failed to defeat it. As he was stung with poison, thus blinded and now slashed, the monster caught him. He again started cursing himself, but this time he didn't want to lose it for himself and also for his team. He used his defense mechanism and defeated the monster he caught and turned that into evidence and make him happy. He played for his current team, Piushin, cutting through the claws of monsters as he used his defense mechanism that helped grow the thorn's legs into swords. The moment he was bitten, he developed their body to survive in harsh conditions. That's why his complex has just changed. Now he has acquired a new defense mechanism. He was stronger now in the fight at full power. He was almost going to kill him. But suddenly an old man came and threw a bottle of acid at the monster. He approached the monster. The monster put his claws on and went to kill the old man. Instantly, Hyatian came to his rescue. The monster hit his claws on his shoulder. The monster took him. He fainted in the thought that now everything is in Sushan. While on the other hand, Hyunbin told them that she had a bad feeling because both Dowa and Hyos Young disappeared, she told them that they should find them one by one and contact her when they find one of them or if something happens. Suchin found her for an hour. Suddenly he gets a smartphone. He reads the note on the phone in this note written about the pet shop. Suddenly an old man comes and tells Sushin that he saved the supreme right he runs to Black Island Wharf. According to the note, the pet shop should be here. He realizes that underwater he sent the message, that's the place where Noah's phone was last time. Suddenly a boy came. Suchin came to the laboratory place, but he found a boy there who was a member of the pet show. He reminded the human to tell him that if he met an enemy, he should run away without involving him. But the boy was very fast. He caught him. The boy told him that Nest Pest is very impressive. Like the scorpion girl he met before Suchin asked him what he was doing with Doa. He disappointed him in the lab he quit after hearing this. They both start fighting on the other side. Hyo's young in prison. There are so many other insect men. One of them fixes his shoulder named 
Hyacian Kong. They were all victims of jungle juice. They were all captured by monsters on the other side of the fence. All the monsters were fed with human flesh insects. Suddenly, the owner of the fish house came to take one human insect to feed the monsters. He, us young, was surprised after seeing him. He took an old man to feed the monsters. Hyatian yelled at them all about why they didn't help him. He told them that they can beat them because they all have insect abilities. They are all very weak and scared, so they can't fight with them. He also told them that they should at least try because there is one word for them that is nest. He used his complex and broke the chain on the other side so that it is faster after wearing special park glasses. Heejin was looking for Doa when he met human insects coming monsters. He got a message from Suchin that the dock is a lap. His phone lost service so he couldn't contact him. The fight started between him and the monsters. Suddenly, Hyunbin came and hallucinated the monsters with his smoke complex because he is a tobacco hawk moth. They both were talking about Sushan's text. Suddenly, there were so many monsters coming, they were ready to fight with all of them. While Sushan and a boy were at the pier and fighting with each other, the boy said to Sushan that all the pests and monsters of the nest were the same as the nest past one Cinderella potion, and the monster wanted to meet him became angry and told him no, they were not the same and punched him in full form, he almost defeated him, and rushed into the laboratory to find Hyacian and Doqua. But suddenly he came back with more power and used his complex by growing a clamp on his body. His shoulder was a doodlebuck, he started to bury Sushin under the sand, he couldn't get out himself. He told Sushin that Gay and Sin gave him this task. He stepped towards the sheep and opened the door. The tide came he wanted to get rid of from the laboratory as a breeder. Suchen started sinking in the water 30 minutes ago. Hyos Young tried to break the fence but failed. The other insects lost hope. Suddenly, Hyatian Kane came. He motivated himself by saying that he can again turn into a simple human if he can get out of there. He accidentally used his powers after seeing this. All the other insect humans also thought that they also have powers. Now they can escape from this place. They were all motivated. The monster came, but they all fought it and killed it in seconds. They all ran towards the Hyatian door. Seeing from the window that all the monsters were drowning, he stopped the boy. But he had already opened the floodgates and entered the room. They were all scared as the lab was flooded by the tide. They all ran towards the empty room and tried to lock the door, but failed the water level increased. Everyone lost hope, but suddenly the water level dropped. Water came out of the hole of the pipe connected to the drainage system. They all came there. Delwa was there. While Sushin came out of the sand, Doa and Hyacian together as the monster was fighting, he lost his special glasses and was now out of control. As he gained special powers, he gave the monster a hard time, while Dohua and Hyacian came out of the lab with the other insect humans. Suddenly, Park Heejin and Hyunbin came there. They were happy to see them and also surprised to see so many insect people. Suddenly, like that, and fell, and everyone was very surprised. He was very hurt and started screaming. Monster used his sand trick. Min, who told everyone to stay inside the smoke cylinder this way, he could save everyone from the sandstorm. Suchin returns, running behind the monster. Huijin wants to stop him or help him, but Hyunmin stops her from doing so. She doesn't agree with So Hyun Min is hallucinating while Hyus Young finds such glasses and wants to give them to her because she knows to cover the animal's eyes makes them calm. He escaped from the smoke with the help of another Hyacian. He chased him and gave him his glasses. Then Suchin thanked him because now he could see everything. Suchin is now back to normal, but suddenly monsters come and take the supreme. Yong chases after them but can't catch them. The monster tells him that he should stay away from this. If he knows what is good for him, he loses them. The monster takes him to the other side of the island so that no one will disturb them. He tells him that they will kill and be killed by each other because that is the real law of the jungle. Once again, using his sand trick to bury Su Chan. But Su Chan flew over the monster again, catching him and dragging him to earth. But suddenly, Hyacian came at that moment. While Huijin recovered consciousness and asked Hyun Bin about Su Chen instantly, there were so many more monsters coming now, Hyun Men could not hallucinate them, because his cigarette ran out. So the last option was they all had to fight the monsters on the other hand. The monsters were surprised that Hyas Young just ran across the whole island to save Sushan.
The fight between Sukin and the monster started like that and almost defeated it. While on the other hand, they all fight with monsters. Pian Man said that just attacking doesn't save them because feed training strengthens their exoskeleton, but they can amputate or destroy them, even burn them. Park Heejin got training in combat techniques based on Juju from Professor John Jai. He used all his skills to kill the human insect monster. Amazed to see him that he is so strong and amazing, Bella also used her ultimate defense mechanism to kill the monster. All the other insect humans were very surprised and remembered that Hios Young told them all earlier about this. They were all motivated and started fighting. They killed all the monsters, Hyun Min said now they have to hurry up and help Suchun because the day is about to start because they can't risk the lives of the townspeople, so they all have to hide like refined youngsters. They came with Antlean to Black Island Wharf at Hyacian Beach. Kang met his grandfather. He stopped himself because the image displayed in the binoculars was not him. He was not his grandson anymore, he was just a monster. He became a stranger to his grandfather and told him that his grandson never came back. The old man started looking through the binoculars, he said, as his memory kept failing him. But every time he looked through these, he could see his little grandson. He told him that he knew that he was his grandson, because he knew his voice and the way he spoke. They both started crying and hugging each other. The best protection agent came to the pet shop lab and started checking the lab. Agent V2 said that some monsters drowned, but few were still alive, so they had to paralyze them with stingers. Suddenly, they found a secret vault that was already open. There were so many monster corpses. At the pier, the school sent a ferry which was big enough to transport all the insect humans. Most of them were taken into the care of the nest. Pious young Kang didn't want to go with them because he wanted to live his life with his grandfather. Pious young said goodbye to them, and they all went to the nest. The pet shop safe house assistant and the lab assistant came to the breeder and said the ant lion was captured. But the breeder told him that he fulfilled his duty, and it was okay to get the predator out of there. And getting rid of the lab was an important task, and he did this. Kyonbin briefed about the events on Black Island in front of the professors, and the result of the mission was that they captured one of the pet shop members with 21 feed train specimens from their lab. Professor Ma said that the purpose of the mission was to explore the island. He replied that their identities were revealed, so they had to fight for themselves. He also said that Hyacian Cha played an important role in finding Professor Junji's lap. Impressed Professor Ma appreciated their efforts. Chang Hun came to the group and congratulated them on their success in the last mission. He wanted to apologize to them despite what came and told him that he should apologize to Hyus Young and the girls for his brutality. Shang Hun took Su Chan and the youngest to the bar for a blind date. Shang Hun told them that they both thanked him for this party, not only the girls who were hit, but they are smart and the right one is the top of Professor Yu's class name. They all start drinking and eating. Su Chen can't drink anymore and wants to leave suddenly bitten, acting like she fainted. Shang Hun and the other two girls told Su Chan to drive them home. Suddenly, Park Hee Jin came to the ad bar, started questioning what happened there, while on the other hand, she told him that if she wanted to know the reason behind his compound, he should come with her. She took her to the lab. She put him down and took off his shirt for the DNA sample. Suddenly, Park Hee Jin came to the lab. She told the bitten that she knows all the bitten took Sushan's blood for DNA. She told them that Professor Yu told her to do it. She showed compassion towards Sushan. She got the DNA and chased Park Heej in it, and Sushan was going to the dorm. Sushan wanted to talk to her, but she didn't give him a positive response. He felt she was upset with him. He offered her a drink, but she refused. He told her that he went back to his room to have a drink with DOA when they got to the room. All they saw here was the whole class partying. Suchin also joins them. Pawagan wants to drink with her. Suddenly, she approaches him, and they both start talking. Meanwhile, Professor Anda tells Professor June that the test result whether Tianbin is positive is correct that Suchin is a walking bomb. He has to be isolated because everyone's safety is at stake. Since he is also like gay, and Sin Professor Jun stops him and asks him not to isolate him because he doesn't want to be alone, he will take care of him because he is his professor. If he doesn't control himself, he will stop him. 
On the other hand, the breeder brings Gay to the monster and tells him that he will help him to kill the professor because he is a big hurdle for them. You will share a nice scheme to kill the professor? Soon, meanwhile, in the forest, Professor John calls Sushin and tells him that the school classified him as a violent threat. Sushin was shocked. Suddenly, Professor John hit him until he died. He ran away. But Professor threw a stone made of explosive chemicals to hit him again. He was very hurt, but he didn't strike back at Professor. He didn't know why Professor did this to him. Professor told him that he himself told him that he lost control while fighting. He also told him Gay and Sin also did the same thing five years ago when he couldn't control his anger, so he killed all his classmates and became a monster. He told him that he heard the same thing happen to Huichin, so need to kill you to save the lives of everyone in the nest, while all the faculty members and the dean saw all this through the video of Professor John attacking him to the brink of death. Suchin shouted that he doesn't belong to monsters and never wanted to be a monster. Suddenly, Hianbin came and hallucinated him. Professor John wanted to show them all. He is not like Gay and Sin after some time he opened his eyes in the hospital. Professor healed all her wounds. He tells him, Professor John all did this to protect her. That's why he fought with him to prove to the school that he is not a threat, Professor. John tells Sushin that you are the strongest species here. Few hours ago, Professor Jun told the class today's lecture is about strengthening their weaknesses. Each of them will receive an individual challenge and they have one week to complete it. Complexes can clash and not fit together. The professor analyzed everyone's weaknesses and strengths and wrote it in a book they all had to strengthen their weaknesses. All classes in the nest are open. The trained field professors one by one call. The students tell them their strengths and weaknesses and give them challenges. The pious youngster has no technical skills, so he needs to cut all the balls with a knife on his foot. Yunji Jiang has a tricky mole cricket and needs to strengthen it. His nails go through concrete slabs because he can't dig a solid spot. Don Zhang needs to build the stamina to strike with an iron mace so that he will swing a 220-pound wrecking ball. Everyone knew his strengths and weaknesses, and Professor gave them a challenge. Except, Suchin Sushan told Park Heejin that Professor told him to come see him after class, and he will give him a challenge that after Sushan and this Professor John were in the basement, he left him alone. Suddenly a praying mantis came to fight with Sushan as he challenged him. Suddenly, the praying mantis came to fight with Sushan. While he was challenging him, Professor John and his assistant were watching him through the window, and the challenge for Sushan was to defeat his natural enemy in such a way considering that he cut off one arm of the manty praying Professor John, wanted to defeat the praying mantis with full capacity. So the lab provided a prosthesis. They both started the fight. Sushan couldn't defeat him because he had a hard skeleton. Jun Young was hit by a powerful attack from Doa that sent his body flying. Hearing the sound of Jun Young's bones cracking made Shin Gaeon laugh. Then Doa attacked him again. Jun Young felt overwhelmed because of the multiple attacks. Jun Young recognized the woman's strength, which was so extraordinary that Jun Young felt like his body was hit by a truck. If things continued like this, Jun Young could really die. Instantly, the woman ran at full force as she unleashed her attack. But Jun Young did his best to dodge, and then he jumped high up. Then Jun Young flew towards Do Hua to counterattack her. But suddenly Jun Young saw the real Do Hua calling his name. This caught Jun Young off guard and made him undo his intention to attack. But it was just a trick that made Jun Young finally attacked by Do Hua. The spider species man was seen with his own web tying Su Chan up. The man said that Shin Gaeon's doping effect was increasing. He said he could be the tallest specimen among his farm animals. The man advised Jun Young to just give up. He didn't think it was worth it for Jun Young to save people like that. The man thought that humanity would definitely be lost if he consumed that. The spider species reminded Yun Young of their common goal of wanting to change this sickening world. He imagined if there would someday be a world where they returned to nature and their status did not determine their lives. A world where all humans were insects, where only the strong would survive in the changed world. Then the weak and mediocre would become extinct. The man said that in a world where there would be no humans, humanity would no longer be necessary. Then Shin Gaeon threw a piece of meat at Doa and told her to eat. 
Doa then picked up the meat with her claws and put it in her mouth. Jun Hyung, who saw that, became emotional. Then Jun Hyung turned his face away and cried. The spider species man assured that with this, Doa would be happy. Su Chen instantly rebelled and shouted to stop her nonsense. Su Chen thought that it would only make her a monster. If she turned into a monster, then there would be no more people left around her. That kind of life would only make her lonely. Hearing that made Jun Young remember his past. When Jun Young was at the orphanage, he was scorned by his peers. None of his friends wanted to be around him. But while the others were avoiding him, Dowa came and invited him to be together. But Jun Hyung refused. It was because of the poison that could have harmed Dowa. Dowa suspected that Jun Hyung was just embarrassed because he was wearing a plaster on his face. Dowa showed Jun Hyung the plaster she used on her face because she was often injured. Because they were sick people, Dowa invited Jun Hyung to be friends. This made Jun Hyung stunned. Jun Hyung felt that he would continue to be lonely without Dowa's presence at that time. Then Jun Young picked up his poison feather and tried with all his might to get up. Shin Gai Yan didn't expect to see Jun Hyung, who still wanted to fight with his body trembling like that. Now even standing up, Jun Hyung couldn't. But Jun Hyung could if he just shot the poison feather. Jun Hyung would somehow prevent Do Hua from consuming it. Jun Hyun quickly threw his poisonous feather at Do Hua, but the poisonous feather only crossed it. Seeing that incident made Shin Gaeon laugh mockingly. She thought that Jun Hyung wanted to shoot the meat to fall, but his shot missed. But unexpectedly, his shot hit the trap on Su Chan's face. That freed Su Chan, and he immediately went into action. Su Chan ran very fast towards Do Hua and took the meat in her hand. Now Jun Hyung couldn't move anymore. He could only hope for Su Chan to save Do Hua. Su Chan flew high above them. With that height, Su Chan thought they wouldn't be able to attack. Even his wings wouldn't get wet because the sprinkler was far enough away. The spider species man looked relaxed. He could prepare plenty of meat at any time. And also, he felt he could still attack Su Chan, even if he flew that high. Previously, Jun Hyung reminded Su Chan that his strength would not be comparable to the creature called Breeder. Jun Hyung told him that the Breeder was a different level. Jun Hyung needed help from Su Chan when helping Do Hua. Then Jun Hyung also gave one tip to Su Chan. Eventually, Su Chan moved to stick to the roof. Seeing this made Breeder confused about what he was doing. The tips conveyed by Jun Hyung required Su Chan to fly at his highest speed. With that speed, Su Chan attacked Breeder not with punches but with his whole body, using the whole body as a bullet. Su Chan immediately went into his attacking action. Su Chan started by crouching to increase his speed and then centered his power on his wings. The speed will increase as fast as lightning. At that moment, what Breeder felt was like a hunter aiming a gun at him. It was the dragonfly's defense move, namely, rifle hunting. Attacking was like firing a bullet at full speed using his entire body. It was very simple, but because it was so fast, Su Chan's body seemed unable to withstand the load. This kind of speed was only possible in one direction. No matter how powerful, Sushan would not be able to turn. Therefore, with this one attack, Sushan had to knock Breeder down. Instantly, Sushan's body slammed into Breeder's body with great force. The attack left Breeder looking miserable. Breeder thought that if he hadn't pulled out a large amount of spiderwebs before the collision, he would have been seriously injured. Breeder thought Sushan was just a tier one child who wasn't even a nest professor. Breeder found this really interesting. Then he unleashed his attack, which was the defense mechanism of the water spider. Now, Suchin was trapped in the water. Suchin had to get out of there immediately. However, there was no way to get out as it was like a prison in water. Then the breeder choked Suchin's neck with great force. Now Suchin was completely in his grasp. It made it difficult for Suchin to breathe, the defense move that Breeder unleashed absorbed all his energy. Breeder was satisfied because he thought he would win. He thought that if Suchin was a water bug, he would have done something to fight back. But unfortunately, Suchin was not a water bug. Breeder said that now Suchin had lost. Then Breeder told the continuation of this story. Suchin will run out of breath. When Suchin woke up later, he and Dowa had completed their feed training. Then Sushin will live a new life, 
namely a life without humanity. Hearing that, Sukhan became very emotional. He screamed in his mind. Sushin really didn't want to become a monster. He begged for anyone to help him. Not long after that, there was someone who destroyed the barrier created by the breeder from outside. Instantly, an explosion occurred and water scattered. Breeder did not expect his fishbowl to be destroyed in just one strike. Then the savior figure helped Suchan to stand up. Suchan looked at him. It turned out that the savior figure was He Jin. Suddenly, Suchan was surprised and wondered how He Jin could get here. He Jin explained that after she reported the two of them missing to the professor, the nest search team immediately moved. Although the search became a little difficult because their cell phones died, but apparently Professor Ma had found their position. Suchin instantly remembered that the nest guards would follow Shin Gaion. A few hours earlier, there was a male nest guard who was secretly following Shin Gaion from behind, but there were no suspicious movements. The nest guard wondered when exactly Shin Gaion would meet with her boss. The man suspected that Shin Gaion already knew that he was following her. Instantly, Shin Gaion disappeared from the nest guard's sight because there was a man protecting him. The man told Shin Gaion that the breeder was waiting for her, and then he immediately escorted Shin Gaion. Suddenly, the officer became confused. But at the same time, suddenly the officer saw Suchin who was flying. Suchin was really lucky that the guard managed to find him. He Jin had heard the news from the little girl wearing Sushin's jacket. Now the girl is in the custody of the nest. Hearing that made Sushin a little relieved. Suddenly, an attack came towards the two of them. The attack came from Dowa. He Jin was surprised to see Dowa who became like that. Suchin told He Jin that Dowa was in an unconscious state because they used some kind of poison to control her. Shin Gaion arrives and immediately attacks He Jin. Suddenly, He Jin immediately attacks the woman back. He Jin finds out that Shin Gaion was the one who let the grasshopper escape, and it turns out that she was also the mastermind this time. After that, Do Wa came running towards He Jin to attack her. Fortunately, He Jin quickly dodged the attack. Then He Jin jumped on top of Do Wa to give her an attack. He Jin apologized first, and then she hit Do Wa's head with a bit of her strength to wake her up. Instantly, Shin Gaion attacked He Jin, which made her face slightly scratched. At the same time came Su Chan, who moved to attack Shin Gaion. Shin Gaion quickly avoided Su Chan's attack. Suddenly, there was a spider web that pulled Su Chan's body back. It was Breeder's spider web that invited Su Chan to play with him alone. Breeder pulled out the marionette spider defense mechanism. Breeder slammed Su Chan's body against He Jin with great force. Then He Jin immediately moved and released the nets that bound Su Chan's body. He Jin realized that the two people were not ordinary people. Their strength was on par with Professor Ji. Shin Gaion told Breeder that she would finish He Jin. Breeder let it go. After all, he wasn't interested in dirty cockroaches like him. Su Chan looked panicked. He realized he had no chance of winning. Then, Su Chan told He Jin to get out to bring Do Wa from this place while Su Chen would buy time for the two of them to leave. But He Jin refused. He Jin was frank if she actually didn't come alone. Suddenly someone appeared who immediately attacked Breeder. The blonde man was Hai Sung. Meanwhile, someone else delivered an attack towards Shin Gaion. The blonde woman took something out of her palm. It was the silk thread that bound Shin Gaion's body. Su Chen looked dumbfounded at her power, where the woman could turn silk threads into clothes. Jung Dayun was seen hanging while lifting the woman named Bang Hyuna. Jung Dayun said that with this, her previous debt was paid off. Breeder seemed relaxed and not phased at all. This was very interesting to them, seeing the nest insects gathered here. Then Shin Gaion easily removed the silk thread that bound her body. Shin Gaion thought of them all as little more than onion children with little power. No matter how many came, nothing would change. Suddenly, there was an attack aimed at Shin Gaion and the breeder. A fiery attack that blew up the place. It turned out to be Professor G. You can see the fire coming out of his hand. Professor G challenged them and asked who he wanted to burn first. The look on Shin Gaion's face immediately turned into fear because she saw Professor G's arrival. Just as Professor G had said earlier that they would meet again. Professor G even came there directly to meet Shin Gaion. 
Professor G can't stand those who always hurt his students. The burns that Professor G had given Shin Gaon five years ago seemed to be lacking. Now Professor G intended to burn Shin Gaon's entire body. Then Professor G took out the flames from his hand to prepare to attack. Shin Gaon was fed up with Professor G continuing to talk about the past. Shin Gaon's face looked very angry and vengeful. She told Professor G to shut his mouth. Then they both ran to attack each other. According to Breeder, the incident was fun to watch, but now is enough time to play. Then Breeder took out his spider web and pulled Shin Gaon's body back. Shin Gaon was surprised by what Breeder was doing. Breeder said that he was the one who would take care of the rest. Then Breeder told his men to deliver Shin Gaon. Then his men immediately grabbed Shin Gaon to take her to the laboratory. Professor G looked shocked at their sudden disappearance. He thought that it was some kind of mimicry. Then Breeder invited Professor G to end all this. Moreover, Breeder has also secured Shin Gaon so that there is no more bloodshed. Breeder will give the orphanage children and jungle juice to him. However, Professor G immediately unleashed his attack on Breeder. He asked Sushan to confirm whether the Breeder was the mastermind of this incident. Sushan confirmed it. In order to find them, Professor G has traveled all over the place, collecting the names of groups that are greedy for jungle juice. Finally, now Professor G could find them. This is all thanks to those who have insisted on targeting his students. Professor G says that this is called karma. Professor G looks very creepy. His eyes are burning brightly as he emits flames from his palms. Professor G doesn't care about the side effects. He focuses on bringing out the biggest explosion and then blowing it up. That attack is called the Bombardier Beetle's defense mechanism, the Bunker Buster. The devastating fire attack enveloped the entire area. The heat could be felt for quite a distance. Professor G's prowess cannot be doubted. The explosion was very powerful and powerful. Suchin felt happy because this way they could win. But suddenly, Suchin widened his eyes in surprise at what he saw ahead. There was a huge insect coming out of the ground. It was Breeder transforming and wrapping his body around himself to protect himself. Then Breeder also decided to show off his strength. Instantly, the huge insect's body wriggled until everyone bounced far back. The breeder bragged and said that he didn't usually get this big. It was all thanks to feed training. Breeder finished their fight here not for himself, but for them. Breeder was frank that it would be a shame to kill them all here. Seeing the giant centipede in front of him scared Suchan and Hee Jin. Suchan felt a sense of threat. He didn't even dare to approach it. Then Breeder said that he actually wanted to finish them off starting with Dohua. But now his intentions have changed because he still has many plans left. Instantly, Breeder left the place and went into the ground. Sushan could not just stand by and watch. He thought they were not too late and could still follow the Breeder by following her through the underground passage. Suchin couldn't just let the children be held captive by him. Then Suchin ran to the underground hole. Immediately, Heejin chased him and tried to stop him. Professor Ji thinks Suchan has used up all his energy. Although Professor G hoped for more, he also realized that his opponent was indeed very strong. Professor G was in awe of Suchin for seeing him fight with such a strong opponent. Professor G suspects that Suchin has perfected his defense mechanism. He thinks Suchin has potential. That's how the incident ended. Finally, everyone had returned to the nest. Doa's body was fine, and there were no significant problems. Although there was a slight effect from Shin Gaon's poison, her condition quickly recovered because she was physically very strong. Meanwhile, Yerim and the other children were entrusted to another security facility. The nest officials had arranged it all. Professor G also told Suchin not to worry because those people were trustworthy. Meanwhile, Shin Gaon and Breeder didn't leave any trace. That was the part that bothered Suchin the most. Suchin didn't know where they were going. His job was only to protect the nest and the orphanage. Suchin was surprised to see Yun Yung beside his bed. Suddenly came Hai Sung, who climbed onto Jun Yung's bed feeling emotional for being a spy. However, Jun Yung was just ignorant and didn't care. Then Jun Yung calls Suchan and says that he thinks people who are weak and have no strength must be pathetic. Jun Yung admitted defeat, but his thoughts about it did not change. Suchan was shocked and didn't expect that those words had made an impression on his heart. 
Su Chen realized that life is miserable if they don't have strength. Su Chen agrees that the world is harsh, because people's lives were often judged by their status. But Su Chen was different. At least he never thought that one's happiness could be judged by such things. Suchin instantly remembered the time when his mother was tortured by those men. His mother had a weak body and didn't have anything. But his mother always told Sushin not to worry. Sushin wondered why mom said that they would be happy. Not long after that, two officers from the nest entered their room. The two men picked up Jun Hyung and brought him in for questioning. Then Jun Hyung said goodbye to Suchan. In his mind, Jun Hyung felt guilty and he hoped that Dohua would be okay. In the evening, Su Chen returned to his dormitory. Su Chen felt very relieved that finally everyone was safe. But actually, Su Chen was still worried about the children. But now he could only wait for the school to find clues. Now that Su Chen was out of the hospital, he had to focus on studying. When Su Chen came out of the bathroom, he suddenly saw He Jin standing there. Suchin asks her what He Jin is doing at this time of night. He Jin told him that there was something she wanted to talk to him about alone, so He Jin came in through the window. Then hesitantly, He Jin asks if Suchin ever slept with Doa. Suddenly, Suchin was dumbfounded by He Jin's question. Thirty minutes ago, at the women's dormitory, there was He Jin, who was busy drying her hair while chatting with Doa. He Jin said that she didn't know that there was an organization that turned children into insect people. She thought it was a very vile and shocking thing. Then Doa, who was playing games while relaxing on her bed, told He Jin an exciting story. Doa explained that on orientation day, Doa got very drunk and ended up falling asleep. Then when she woke up the next morning, it turned out that Doa had slept in the same bed with Su Chen. Hearing this made He Jin shocked until she accidentally dropped her hair dryer. Instantly, He Jin immediately left there through the window. He Jin admitted that she suddenly remembered that she had something to do. Do Hua, who knew that He Jin was going to Su Chen's place, asked to deliver a message to Su Chen. Instantly, He Jin was shocked that she had been caught. The look on Do Hua's face looked like she was embarrassed. She remembered the moment Su Chen saved her. Then immediately, Do Hua undid her intention to deliver a message to Su Chan through He Jin. Do Hua intends to thank Su Chan directly. Events return to the present where He Jin was already inside Su Chan's room. He Jin asked Su Chan to explain everything. The expression on her face was so horrible that it scared Su Chan. Of all the battles Su Chan had faced, this was the most terrifying. Finally, Su Shan knelt before He Jin while explaining in detail and carefully in order to survive. After hearing all the explanations from Su Chen, He Jin felt embarrassed. Her cheeks turned bright red. He Jin felt that she had overreacted to this. Su Chen admitted that he had never held hands with a woman. However, He Jin denied this. He Jin tells him that Su Chen has held hands and has also hugged women. However, Su Chen never remembered it because the situation at that time was very chaotic. He Jin was annoyed and considered Su Chen's poor memory like a dragonfly. Su Chen then thanked He Jin because he felt that she always helped him. Just like the time before in the warehouse where He Jin was injured for protecting him. Even this time, if it wasn't for He Jin, Su Chan would have died. Su Chan wished he could do something to repay her kindness. Instantly, He Jin got close to Su Chan's face and told him to return the favor. The next day in a towering building in the professor's conference room. The nest officials were having a small meeting. Today they will discuss the decision that will be taken by the deans regarding the case this time. Professor Do Yon said that this time nest would not remain silent. He will crack down on the breeder and the organizations under it. They will prepare for a large-scale war against breeder and his organization. Then Professor G asked him if he had found out where they were. For that matter, Professor Do Yan tells him that Lee Jun Young will help them. Lee Jun Young is a spy intentionally planted by the breeder in the nest. From what Professor Do Yan had heard, Lee Jun Young had been disposed of by breeder. It was a video recording of the interrogation conducted before he was detained. Then Professor Do Yan replayed the video recording. Lee Jun Young told them that the name of the organization was Pet Shop. It was an organization that used jungle juice to destroy the current life in order to create a new life for insect people. 
The Angel Orphanage was one of the places used to turn humans into bug people. Lee Jun Hyung also told us that there was another place whose name was unknown. Breeder is a very careful person. He does not share the slightest information with his subordinates. However, there was one place that Lee Jun Hyung knew about without the breeder's knowledge. It was a place where finished insect human samples were collected. It was also called a farm. Professor Ji suspected that Breeder and Shin Gaiyan were in that place, but Professor Doyan still couldn't confirm it. But it was definitely one of their headquarters. Professor Doyan thinks that if they find out about the place, it is likely that they will be able to catch the leader. The place is located on an island called Black Island. The island wasn't very famous, but sometimes there were some tourists who came. The farm was hidden somewhere there, so they had to investigate first. Professor G will send some high-level students to go there. Then, Professor Doyan said that the dean ordered to send the best first-year students through the group tournament. Hearing this, Professor G immediately got up and kicked the table. He didn't agree with it because he thought they were still young. Moreover, why does it have to be first-year students? Professor Dohyeon explained that the upperclassmen were busy solving other problems. Moreover, this task was not dangerous because they were only there to investigate the island. According to Professor Dohyeon, there are many outstanding first-year students this year. In yesterday's incident, many of Professor G's students were also involved. The dean must want these students' skills to be honed as quickly as possible to maintain the nest's defenses. Professor Huan Yong also agreed with Professor Do Hyun's opinion. According to her, first-year students can also do the investigation. Being overprotective of the children was not good for them. Professor Huan Yong reminded him about the case of Shin Ga Yong who left this place. Professor Ji looked pensive thinking about it. It was unfortunate, but there was no reason for them to protect the students all the time. Compared to now, they should become stronger. Meanwhile, at a restaurant, there was He Jin who was feeling hot from eating spicy food. The woman was eating together with Sushan. Suchan immediately gave her a glass of water. The lunch was a form of reciprocation from Suchan to He Jin. Suchan felt bad for returning the favor with just this, but He Jin was okay with it. There was a very lively atmosphere in the hallway. Suchan, who was visiting the place for the first time, was amazed to see it. He Jin told him that it was a place for ordinary people who didn't want to go to college, because they both want to enjoy a good life, even though they have become insect people. Then He Jin asked Su Chan about Hai Sung's whereabouts, because last night she didn't see Hai Sung in the room. Then Su Chan told her that Hai Sung was going home this weekend to meet his parents. Not long after that, Yung Dayun came along with Hyuna, who caught the two of them. Yung Dayun teased the two of them, who were like lovers. Then He Jin asked if they were here to eat Taekboki. Yung Dayun told her that she said the lab was open, so they wanted to go there. Hearing the news made He Jin enthusiastic. She also invited Su Chan to come along. The research laboratory, also known as the lab, is where research is conducted. Researchers there also develop various equipment for students and agents. Their force jackets are also made there. Sometimes the lab is also opened for students. Equipment to protect their complex is made there. But if the lab is open to students, it's a sign that there will be a battle soon. A while later. Suchin and He Jin came to the research laboratory office of the Development Engineering Department. There were Yung Dayun and Bang Hyuna following behind them. Then they walked up to the woman guarding the information desk to register. Suchin looked around the place. He looked amazed at the amount of equipment and machines that were very luxurious. He Jin was also coming to the Development Department for the first time. Then Yung Dayun asked Suchan about what tools he would list. But Su Chan is still hesitant and will follow them. Yung Dayun and Bang Hyuna will make a martial arts weapon. Bang Hyuna said that it is a weapon that can win against both of them. Jung Dayun remembered their first lecture where Su Chan helped them. They were both grateful, but they were also a little upset. At that time, Yung Dayun felt that she could not continue like this and had to become stronger, because if not, as Professor Ji said, they would just die. As Suchan swallowed his saliva, he felt nervous. Those words made Suchan realize that he also had to become stronger 
to be able to fight his powerful enemy. Sushin had finally decided what he was going to choose and eagerly approached the registration desk. Hei Jin did not expect to see Suchin's response. At first, Hee Jin thought that Suchin would be sad and not excited. Since they lost to the breeder and were still thinking about the unsaved children, Hee Jin wanted to encourage him again. However, Hee Jin realized that it seemed unnecessary. On the rooftop, Professor Ji and Professor Huang Geong were talking about the group tournament. Professor Huang Gong asked Professor Ji's opinion on who might win. Professor Huang Gong heard that many first-year students are unique. But Professor Ji didn't care about that. Even if they were the species with the best complex, it wouldn't affect whether they won or lost. It's the same with all creatures on Earth. When it comes to the game of survival, the one who strives to be stronger wins. In a quiet room filled with research objects, a man wearing a lab coat and holding a red clipboard entered the room. Instantly, the man was shocked to see the scene in front of him. The man found the breeder who was tying Shin Gaiyong's body with his net on a chair. The man asked what they were doing there. Breeder said that Shin Gaiyong suddenly wanted to kill him, so Breeder had no choice but to tie her up. But according to the man, it was still inappropriate for the Breeder to treat a guest like that. Finally, Breeder listened to the man's words and then untied the rope. Breeder asked Shin Gaiyong to solve this problem through communication like adults. Shin Gaiyong immediately attacked Breeder by scraping the sharp tip of her tail against Breeder's forehead, injuring his face slightly. Shin Gaiyong said that she really wanted to punch Breeder's head, but because Shin Gaiyong felt that she owed Breeder a lot, she would let Breeder off for this incident. But Shin Gaiyong emphasized that if Breeder bothered her again, then Shin Gyeong would not hesitate to finish off Breeder. Shin Gaiyong looked very angry. Breeder suspected that Shin Gaiyong was angry because of something. Then Breeder said his apology if he had offended Shin Gaiyong. Then Breeder tried to calm Shin Gaiyong. He asked Shin Gaiyong to sit down, and Breeder would make tea for Shin Gaiyong as an apology. Breeder guessed that Shin Gaiyong seemed to be very emotional like that because she could not kill Professor Ji. Breeder became increasingly curious about what had happened to Shin Gaiyong five years ago at the nest. It was known that in her past, Shin Gaiyong had fought against Professor Ji but she was unable to defeat Professor Ji. Shin Gaiyong considers Professor Ji like a monster. After that, Breeder approached Shin Gaiyong and gave her a glass of hot tea. Then Breeder asked Shin Gaiyong to tell him. Breeder said if he was willing to help Shin Gaiyong to kill Professor Ji. Then Shin Gaiyong asked in what way Breeder would help her. Previously, Shin Gaiyong had used students as bait, but that method did not work for Professor Ji. Shin Gaiyong thinks that Professor Ji and the others are not stupid people who can be trapped by such methods. Breeder told Shin Gaiyong that there were many other ways besides that. Breeder explained that the pill could make Shin Gaiyong secretly enter the nest like that time. According to Breeder, as long as Shin Gaiyong knows the location of the nest, Professor Ji will lose. Breeder said that if Shin Gaiyong could bring his men at will, Breeder added that Shin Gaiyong could just call what Shin Gaiyong needed. Hearing Breeder's offer made Shin Gaiyong surprised because she thought Breeder was very different. Shin Gaiyong did not expect Breeder to be kind to her. Shin Gaiyong thinks that when a man suddenly becomes kind to a woman, she thinks there is only one reason, which is because the man is in love, or there is another intention behind it. Breeder seemed to laugh a little after hearing Shin Gaiyong's words. It seems that Shin Gaiyong's suspicion is true, that there is another intention from Breeder. Elsewhere, Professor Ji is seen explaining something to his students. Professor Ji explained about an island called Black Island. This island is quite remote, the access is quite difficult to get out, and the population is small. Professor Ji said that if there was a group of people who attacked Nest some time ago, the group hid in a safe place called Pet Shop on Black Island. Professor Ji added that this place could be considered a gathering place for insect people like them. Professor Ji told his students that some of them would go there disguised as tourists, and to be the group that did this mission, they would do a group tournament. Then Professor Ji is seen explaining thoroughly to all his students. It seemed that Su Qin was very ambitious to win the group tournament. According to Su Qin, if he couldn't win it, then his absence while helping Dowa could destroy his grades this semester. Su Qin looked very trembling, however. He had to be chosen. 
Then Professor G explained the rules of the group tournament this time. They would be divided into four teams in the tournament. From each team, the winning team will move on to the next round, and the winning team in the final round will be selected to do a special mission as an investigation team. Professor G said that in this tournament, there will be a battle. Team participants can fight the opposing team with their respective complexes. But team participants are prohibited from killing or severely injuring the opponent. The participants were very enthusiastic about participating in this group tournament. Professor G emphasized that what he meant was not fighting with resistance. As Professor G explained, this is a test to be selected as an investigation team. Each team would mark their area with a flag. The way for the team to win is to capture the flag of the opposing team. Participants cannot know the location of the opposing team, but if they can capture a member of the opposing team, they will get a GPS point of the location of the opposing team's headquarters. Professor G explained that this rule is a scenario that the participants could face as an investigation team later. The team that will run this scenario perfectly will be chosen as the investigation team. The club tournament is about to start. Group A and Group B will start the first round of the tournament. Then Professor G asked Group A and Group B to go to the training ground. As Group A and Group B have planted their team flags, the first round of the group tournament begins. Two people from Group B immediately ran towards Group A. It was seen that the group members were divided into two, namely as flag seekers and flag guards. Professor G explained that searching for the opponent's flag without a plan in such a large forest was an inefficient way. The most efficient way is like the second rule that Professor G has explained. They must find the opposing team members first, then capture them to find the GPS location of the opposing team's headquarters. Suddenly, Group B was ambushed by Group A, as a rather large explosion occurred. Group A was very surprised by the explosion. Dayun, who was a member of Group B, said that she had made a weapon to win against Group A. The weapon that Dayun used was in the form of a very large iron mace. He Jin said that if the weapon that Dayun used would not be able to hit her, He Jin could easily avoid Dayun's iron mace attack. Suddenly, both of He Jin's legs were wrapped in a silk net. It was discovered that the silk net belonged to Huna. Instantly, He Jin's entire body was bound, and she could not move at all. Seeing that He Jin was bound, Dayun quickly attacked He Jin with her iron mace. He Jin said that she wouldn't be able to dodge the attack, but Su Chan quickly helped He Jin before the iron mace hit He Jin's body. Dayun's weapon was quite powerful. Dayun told He Jin and Su Chan that He Jin and Su Chan's fighting experience was more than theirs. However, that didn't mean Su Chan and his team could defeat them easily. Looking at the first round, Professor Ji said that Su Chan and He Jin have been together since their first semester. Professor Ji thinks that individually, Sushan and He Jin might be stronger. However, as a team, Professor Ji thinks that Dayun and Huna are much stronger than them. The flag guards of Group A and Group B were eagerly awaiting the results of their matches. On the other hand, the battle between Sushan and He Jin against Dayun and Huna was very fierce. The atmosphere was getting interesting. Dayun and Huna were seen attacking Sushan and He Jin. They will prove in this tournament. Who will be the strongest? Jung Dayun threw an attack right at Su Chan and He Jin. Instantly, there was a huge explosion that made Su Chan and He Jin bounce far back. But fortunately, they were not hit by the object because their bones would have been cracked if they had hit it. He Jin told him that the woman was a spiny orb spider, or commonly known as a bolus spider. It had something like a sticky ball at the end of its web, and it would swing it towards its prey. Suchin instantly remembered the breeder, which was also a species of spider. Then He Jin explained further that all spiders had one common weakness. The reason spiders use venom and their webs is to protect their weak physique. In other words, they are weak in physical combat. He Jin was instantly trapped by Bang Huna's attack. He Jin could not move because her body had been bound by a restraining suit made of silk thread. Bang Huna made sure that this time her prey would not be able to get out empty-handed. Bang Huna is a species of silk moth, which is an adult form of silkworm that can produce original silk. Her silk web was stronger than what they had imagined, 
Su Chen, who saw that, screamed hysterically, calling He Jin. But He Jin assured Su Chen that she could tear it with her teeth. Instantly, Yong Dayun threw an attack at Su Chan that could cut the log. Luckily, Su Chen was not hit by the attack. Su Chen continued to run away from her. Su Chen didn't expect their strength to be like this, different from their strength during the first class. Now they could attack without the slightest gap. Then, Bang Huna would put the handcuffs on He Jin's hands for Ness to tell them the location of her opponent's flag. They would end this quickly. As Bang Huna approached He Jin, He Jin suddenly managed to free herself. Now He Jin would become more serious to fight the two of them. The look on Bang Huna's face and also Jang Dayun's is very frightening to see. Bang Huna wondered how He Jin could escape. Then Jung Dayun immediately threw her gun at He Jin. Instantly, he Jin pulled out the weapon she made in the lab. It was a special weapon designed specifically for her complex. Around it were sharp thorns like cockroach legs. With that weapon, the ball thrown by Young Dayun was shattered into pieces. He Jin took out the combat knuckles, skill, black thorns. Young Dayun looked surprised and wondered what kind of power He Jin had. Then Young Dayun ordered Huna to immediately make another silk net. But because she was nervous, Huna took a long time to make it. At that moment, Su Chen immediately took action. Su Chen flew very quickly towards Yung Dayun. Although she wasn't wearing her glasses now, Su Chen knew the trick by now. Su Chen didn't want to hurt Yung Dayun, but Su Chen had to win. Professor Ji, who saw the incident, looked panicked. With Su Chen using his defense mechanism, Professor Ji thought that his opponent could die. But Su Chen used the hunting rifle skill, blank bullets. It was a way that would only scare his opponent by using his complex. Then, Su Chen handcuffed Yung Dayun's hands. As a result, Yung Dayun was eliminated, and Team B's position was revealed. The rest of their colleagues who saw the scene from behind the screen were amazed at the prowess of the transfer student who had managed to catch one person. Meanwhile, Professor Ji was silent as Su Chen watched closely. He saw Sushan stop just before colliding with a swooping flight technique that only dragonflies could do. However, he thinks the mechanism still looks unstable. But Professor Ji heard that Sushan had also made something in the lab. Meanwhile, Bang Huna looked very panicked and scared because she only lived alone. Then Huna immediately ran away from that place. He Jin, who saw Huna running away, immediately chased her. But suddenly, Huna ran towards the edge of the cliff and then fell because her foot slipped. Suddenly, He Jin quickly caught her. Unexpectedly, it was just a trick from Hyuna to trick He Jin. They both fell down the cliff. Hyuna knew that it was He Jin who had returned their ID cards. Hyuna realized that He Jin was a very responsible person as class president, and also had a kind heart to all classmates. At first, Hyuna didn't want to take advantage of her good nature, but Hyuna also wanted to win. Then, Yuna immediately put handcuffs on her hands. As a result, Park Hee Jin was eliminated, and the location of Group A was revealed. Fortunately, they both survived because they fell on a cocoon made by Huna. Professor G concluded that it was now a one-on-one -on -one match. He was surprised to see that the guard team of Group B was not there. Then Su Shan would hurry up because he already knew the location of Group B. Hai Sung immediately called Su Chan. Haisung said that they were done because the boys had arrived at their place. Hearing that, Su Chan didn't seem to believe it. Hei Jin was only eliminated two minutes ago. Haisung guessed that it looked like they were around here. Haisung was sure that they must have left their location, and all the members were tasked with finding the opponent's location. Haisung tried his best to hold them off, but his condition was not good. Haisung was desperate and thought that they would lose. Su Chan didn't just stand by, he got straight into the action. Su Chan immediately ran to find his weapon, which he had hidden behind a tree. According to Su Chan, this is still not over, and he will tackle this problem. Jun Young was hit by a powerful attack from Doa that sent his body flying. Hearing the sound of Jun Young's bones cracking made Shin Gaion laugh. Then Doa attacked him again. Jun Young felt overwhelmed because of the multiple attacks. Jun Young recognized the woman's strength, which was so extraordinary that Jun Young felt like his body was hit by a truck. If things continued like this, Jun Young could really die. 
Instantly, the woman ran at full force as she unleashed her attack. But Jun Young did his best to dodge, and then he jumped high up. Then Jun Young flew towards Do Hua to counterattack her. But suddenly, Jun Young saw the real Do Hua calling his name. This caught Jun Young off guard and made him undo his intention to attack. But it was just a trick that made Jun Young finally attacked by Do Hua. The spider species man was seen with his own web tying Su Chan up. The man said that Shin Gaiyan's doping effect was increasing. He said he could be the tallest specimen among his farm animals. The man advised Jun Young to just give up. He didn't think it was worth it for Jun Young to save people like that. The man thought that humanity would definitely be lost if he consumed that. The spider species reminded Yun Yung of their common goal of wanting to change this sickening world. He imagined if there would someday be a world where they returned to nature and their status did not determine their lives. A world where all humans were insects, where only the strong would survive in the changed world. Then the weak and mediocre would become extinct. The man said that in a world where there would be no humans, humanity would no longer be necessary. Then Shin Gaion threw a piece of meat at Doa and told her to eat. Doa then picked up the meat with her claws and put it in her mouth. Jun Hyung, who saw that, became emotional. Then Jun Hyung turned his face away and cried. The spider species man assured that with this, Doa would be happy. Su Chen instantly rebelled and shouted to stop her nonsense. Su Chen thought that it would only make her a monster. If she turned into a monster, then there would be no more people left around her. That kind of life would only make her lonely. Hearing that made Jun Young remember his past. When Jun Young was at the orphanage, he was scorned by his peers. None of his friends wanted to be around him. But while the others were avoiding him, Dowa came and invited him to be together. But Jun Young refused. It was because of the poison that could have harmed Doa. Doa suspected that Jun Hyung was just embarrassed because he was wearing a plaster on his face. Doa showed Jun Hyung the plaster she used on her face because she was often injured. Because they were sick people, Doa invited Jun Hyung to be friends. This made Jun Hyung stunned. Jun Hyung felt that he would continue to be lonely without Doa's presence at that time. Then Jun Young picked up his poison feather and tried with all his might to get up. Shin Gai Yan didn't expect to see Jun Hyung, who still wanted to fight with his body trembling like that. Now even standing up, Jun Hyung couldn't. But Jun Hyung could if he just shot the poison feather. Jun Hyung would somehow prevent Do Hua from consuming it. Jun Hyung quickly threw his poisonous feather at Do Hua. But the poisonous feather only crossed it. Seeing that incident made Shin Gaion laugh mockingly. She thought that Jun Hyung wanted to shoot the meat to fall, but his shot missed. But unexpectedly, his shot hit the trap on Su Chan's face. That freed Su Chan, and he immediately went into action. Su Chan ran very fast towards Do Hua and took the meat in her hand. Now Jun Hyung couldn't move anymore. He could only hope for Su Chan to save Do Hua. Su Chan flew high above them. With that height, Su Chan thought they wouldn't be able to attack. Even his wings wouldn't get wet because the sprinkler was far enough away. The spider species man looked relaxed. He could prepare plenty of meat at any time. And also, he felt he could still attack Su Chan, even if he flew that high. Previously, Jun Hyung reminded Su Chan that his strength would not be comparable to the creature called Breeder. Jun Hyung told him that the Breeder was a different level. Jun Young needed help from Su Chan when helping Do Hua. Then Jun Young also gave one tip to Su Chan. Eventually, Su Chan moved to stick to the roof. Seeing this made Breeder confused about what he was doing. The tips conveyed by Jun Young required Su Chan to fly at his highest speed. With that speed, Su Chan attacked Breeder not with punches but with his whole body, using the whole body as a bullet. Su Chan immediately went into his attacking action. Su Chan started by crouching to increase his speed and then centered his power on his wings. The speed will increase as fast as lightning. At that moment, what Breeder felt was like a hunter aiming a gun at him. It was the dragonfly's defense move, namely, rifle hunting. Attacking was like firing a bullet at full speed using his entire body. It was very simple, but because it was so fast, Su Chan's body seemed unable to withstand the load. This kind of speed was only possible in one direction. No matter how powerful, Su Chan would not be able to turn. Therefore, with this one attack, 
Sushan had to knock Breeder down. Instantly, Suchan's body slammed into Breeder's body with great force. The attack left Breeder looking miserable. Breeder thought that if he hadn't pulled out a large amount of spiderwebs before the collision, he would have been seriously injured. Breeder thought Sushin was just a tier one child who wasn't even a nest professor. Breeder found this really interesting. Then he unleashed his attack, which was the defense mechanism of the water spider. Now, Suchin was trapped in the water. Suchin had to get out of there immediately. However, there was no way to get out as it was like a prison in water. Then the breeder choked Suchin's neck with great force. Now Suchin was completely in his grasp. It made it difficult for Suchin to breathe. The defense move that Breeder unleashed absorbed all his energy. Breeder was satisfied because he thought he would win. He thought that if Suchin was a water bug, he would have done something to fight back. But unfortunately, Suchin was not a water bug. Breeder said that now Suchin had lost. Then Breeder told the continuation of this story. Suchin will run out of breath. When Suchin woke up later, he and Doha had completed their feed training. Then Sushin will live a new life, namely a life without humanity. Hearing that, Sukhan became very emotional. He screamed in his mind. Sushin really didn't want to become a monster. He begged for anyone to help him. Not long after that, there was someone who destroyed the barrier created by the breeder from outside. Instantly, an explosion occurred and water scattered. Breeder did not expect his fishbowl to be destroyed in just one strike. Then the savior figure helped Suchan to stand up. Suchan looked at him. It turned out that the savior figure was He Jin. Suddenly, Suchan was surprised and wondered how He Jin could get here. He Jin explained that after she reported the two of them missing to the professor, the nest search team immediately moved. Although the search became a little difficult because their cell phones died, but apparently Professor Ma had found their position. Suchin instantly remembered that the nest guards would follow Shin Gaion. A few hours earlier, there was a male nest guard who was secretly following Shin Gaion from behind, but there were no suspicious movements. The nest guard wondered when exactly Shin Gaion would meet with her boss. The man suspected that Shin Gaion already knew that he was following her. Instantly, Shin Gaion disappeared from the nest guard's sight because there was a man protecting him. The man told Shin Gaion that the breeder was waiting for her, and then he immediately escorted Shin Gaion. Suddenly, the officer became confused. But at the same time, suddenly the officer saw Suchin, who was flying. Suchin was really lucky that the guard managed to find him. Hei Jin had heard the news from the little girl wearing Suchin's jacket. Now the girl is in the custody of the nest. Hearing that made Suchin a little relieved. Suddenly, an attack came towards the two of them. The attack came from Doha. He Jin was surprised to see Doha who became like that. Suchin told He Jin that Doha was in an unconscious state because they used some kind of poison to control her. Shin Gaion arrives and immediately attacks He Jin. Suddenly, He Jin immediately attacks the woman back. He Jin finds out that Shin Gaion was the one who let the grasshopper escape, and it turns out that she was also the mastermind this time. After that, Doha came running towards He Jin to attack her. Fortunately, He Jin quickly dodged the attack. Then He Jin jumped on top of Doha to give her an attack. He Jin apologized first, and then she hit Doha's head with a bit of her strength to wake her up. Instantly, Shin Gaion attacked He Jin, which made her face slightly scratched. At the same time came Su Chan, who moved to attack Shin Gaion. Shin Gaion quickly avoided Su Chan's attack. Suddenly, there was a spider web that pulled Su Chan's body back. It was Breeder's spider web that invited Su Chan to play with him alone. Breeder pulled out the marionette spider defense mechanism. Breeder slammed Su Chan's body against He Jin with great force. Then He Jin immediately moved and released the nets that bound Su Chan's body. He Jin realized that the two people were not ordinary people. Their strength was on par with Professor Ji. Shin Gaion told Breeder that she would finish He Jin. Breeder let it go. After all, he wasn't interested in dirty cockroaches like him. Su Chen looked panicked. He realized he had no chance of winning. Then, Su Chen told He Jin to get out to bring Doha from this place, while Su Chen would buy time for the two of them to leave. But He Jin refused. He Jin was frank if she actually didn't come alone. 
suddenly someone appeared who immediately attacked Breeder. The blonde man was Haisung. Meanwhile, someone else delivered an attack towards Shin Gayon. The blonde woman took something out of her palm. It was the silk thread that bound Shin Gayon's body. Su Chen looked dumbfounded at her power, where the woman could turn silk threads into clothes. Jung Dayun was seen hanging while lifting the woman named Bang Hyuna. Jung Dayun said that with this, her previous debt was paid off. Breeder seemed relaxed and not phased at all. This was very interesting to them, seeing the nest insects gathered here. Then Shin Gayon easily removed the silk thread that bound her body. Shin Gayon thought of them all as little more than onion children with little power. No matter how many came, nothing would change. Suddenly, there was an attack aimed at Shin Gayon and the breeder. A fiery attack that blew up the place. It turned out to be Professor G. You can see the fire coming out of his hand. Professor G challenged them and asked who he wanted to burn first. The look on Shin Gayon's face immediately turned into fear because she saw Professor G's arrival. Just as Professor G had said earlier that they would meet again. Professor G even came there directly to meet Shin Gayon. Professor G can't stand those who always hurt his students. The burns that Professor G had given Shin Gayon five years ago seemed to be lacking. Now Professor G intended to burn Shin Gayon's entire body. Then Professor G took out the flames from his hand to prepare to attack. Shin Gayon was fed up with Professor G continuing to talk about the past. Shin Gayon's face looked very angry and vengeful. She told Professor G to shut his mouth. Then they both ran to attack each other. According to Breeder, the incident was fun to watch, but now is enough time to play. Then Breeder took out his spider web and pulled Shin Gayon's body back. Shin Gayon was surprised by what Breeder was doing. Breeder said that he was the one who would take care of the rest. Then Breeder told his men to deliver Shin Gayon. Then his men immediately grabbed Shin Gayon to take her to the laboratory. Professor G looked shocked at their sudden disappearance. He thought that it was some kind of mimicry. Then Breeder invited Professor G to end all this. Moreover, Breeder has also secured Shin Gayon so that there is no more bloodshed. Breeder will give the orphanage children and jungle juice to him. However, Professor G immediately unleashed his attack on Breeder. He asked Sushan to confirm whether the Breeder was the mastermind of this incident. Sushan confirmed it. In order to find them, Professor G has traveled all over the place, collecting the names of groups that are greedy for jungle juice. Finally, now Professor G could find them. This is all thanks to those who have insisted on targeting his students. Professor G says that this is called karma. Professor G looks very creepy. His eyes are burning brightly as he emits flames from his palms. Professor G doesn't care about the side effects. He focuses on bringing out the biggest explosion and then blowing it up. That attack is called the Bombardier Beetle's defense mechanism, the Bunker Buster. The devastating fire attack enveloped the entire area. The heat could be felt for quite a distance. Professor G's prowess cannot be doubted. The explosion was very powerful and powerful. Su Chen felt happy because this way they could win. But suddenly Su Chen widened his eyes in surprise at what he saw ahead. There was a huge insect coming out of the ground. It was Breeder transforming and wrapping his body around himself to protect himself. Then Breeder also decided to show off his strength. Instantly, the huge insect's body wriggled until everyone bounced far back. The breeder bragged and said that he didn't usually get this big. It was all thanks to feed training. Breeder finished their fight here not for himself, but for them. Breeder was frank that it would be a shame to kill them all here. Seeing the giant centipede in front of him scared Su Chan and He Jin. Su Chen felt a sense of threat. He didn't even dare to approach it. Then Breeder said that he actually wanted to finish them off starting with Dohua. But now his intentions have changed because he still has many plans left. Instantly, Breeder left the place and went into the ground. Sushan could not just stand by and watch. He thought they were not too late and could still follow the Breeder by following her through the underground passage. Sushan couldn't just let the children be held captive by him. Then Sushan ran to the underground hole. Immediately, Heejin chased him and tried to stop him. Professor Ji thinks Sushan has used up all his energy. Although Professor G hoped for more, he also realized that his opponent was indeed very strong.
Professor Ji was in awe of Su Chen for seeing him fight with such a strong opponent. Professor Ji suspects that Su Chen has perfected his defense mechanism. He thinks Su Chen has potential. That's how the incident ended. Finally, everyone had returned to the nest. Doa's body was fine, and there were no significant problems. Although there was a slight effect from Shin Gaon's poison, her condition quickly recovered because she was physically very strong. Meanwhile, Yerim and the other children were entrusted to another security facility. The nest officials had arranged it all. Professor Ji also told Su Chen not to worry because those people were trustworthy. Meanwhile, Shin Gaion and Breeder didn't leave any trace. That was the part that bothered Su Chen the most. Su Chen didn't know where they were going. His job was only to protect the nest and the orphanage. Su Chen was surprised to see Yun Yung beside his bed. Suddenly came Hai Sung, who climbed onto Jun Hyung's bed feeling emotional for being a spy. However, Jun Hyung was just ignorant and didn't care. Then Jun Hyung calls Su Chan and says that he thinks people who are weak and have no strength must be pathetic. Jun Hyung admitted defeat, but his thoughts about it did not change. Su Chen was shocked and didn't expect that those words had made an impression on his heart. Su Chen realized that life is miserable if they don't have strength. Su Chen agrees that the world is harsh because people's lives were often judged by their status. But Su Chen was different. At least he never thought that one's happiness could be judged by such things. Su Chen instantly remembered the time when his mother was tortured by those men. His mother had a weak body and didn't have anything. But his mother always told Su Chen not to worry. Su Chen wondered why mom said that they would be happy. Not long after that, two officers from the nest entered their room. The two men picked up Jun Hyung and brought him in for questioning. Then Jun Hyung said goodbye to Su Chan. In his mind, Jun Hyung felt guilty, and he hoped that Dohua would be okay. In the evening, Su Chan returned to his dormitory. Su Chan felt very relieved that finally everyone was safe. But actually, Su Chan was still worried about the children. But now he could only wait for the school to find clues. Now that Su Chan was out of the hospital, he had to focus on studying. When Su Chen came out of the bathroom, he suddenly saw He Jin standing there. Su Chen asks her what He Jin is doing at this time of night. He Jin told him that there was something she wanted to talk to him about alone, so He Jin came in through the window. Then hesitantly, He Jin asks if Su Chen ever slept with Doa. Suddenly, Su Chen was dumbfounded by He Jin's question. Thirty minutes ago, at the women's dormitory, there was He Jin, who was busy drying her hair while chatting with Doa. He Jin said that she didn't know that there was an organization that turned children into insect people. She thought it was a very vile and shocking thing. Then Doa, who was playing games while relaxing on her bed, told He Jin an exciting story. Doa explained that on orientation day, Doa got very drunk and ended up falling asleep. Then, when she woke up the next morning, it turned out that Doa had slept in the same bed with Su Chen. Hearing this made He Jin shocked until she accidentally dropped her hair dryer. Instantly, He Jin immediately left there through the window. He Jin admitted that she suddenly remembered that she had something to do. Doa, who knew that He Jin was going to Su Chen's place, asked to deliver a message to Su Chen. Instantly, He Jin was shocked that she had been caught. The look on Doa's face looked like she was embarrassed. She remembered the moment Su Chun saved her. Then immediately, Doa undid her intention to deliver a message to Su Chan through He Jin. Doa intends to thank Su Chan directly. Events return to the present where He Jin was already inside Su Chan's room. He Jin asked Su Chan to explain everything. The expression on her face was so horrible that it scared Su Chan. Of all the battles Su Chan had faced, this was the most terrifying. Finally, Su Shan knelt before He Jin while explaining in detail and carefully in order to survive. After hearing all the explanations from Su Chen, He Jin felt embarrassed. Her cheeks turned bright red. He Jin felt that she had overreacted to this. Su Chen admitted that he had never held hands with a woman. However, He Jin denied this. He Jin tells him that Su Chen has held hands and has also hugged women. However, Su Chen never remembered it because the situation at that time was very chaotic. He Jin was annoyed and considered Su Chen's poor memory like a dragonfly. Su Chen then thanked He Jin because he felt that she always helped him. 
just like the time before in the warehouse where He Jin was injured for protecting him. Even this time, if it wasn't for He Jin, Su Chan would have died. Su Chan wished he could do something to repay her kindness. Instantly, He Jin got close to Su Chan's face and told him to return the favor. The next day, in a towering building in the professor's conference room, the Nest officials were having a small meeting. Today they will discuss the decision that will be taken by the deans regarding the case this time. Professor Do Yon said that this time Nest would not remain silent. He will crack down on the breeder and the organizations under it. They will prepare for a large-scale war against Breeder and his organization. Then Professor G asked him if he had found out where they were. For that matter, Professor Do Yon tells him that Lee Jun Young will help them. Lee Jun Young is a spy intentionally planted by the breeder in the nest. From what Professor Do Yon had heard, Lee Jun Young had been disposed of by breeder. It was a video recording of the interrogation conducted before he was detained. Then Professor Do Yon replayed the video recording. Lee Jun Young told them that the name of the organization was Pet Shop. It was an organization that used jungle juice to destroy the current life in order to create a new life for insect people. The Angel Orphanage was one of the places used to turn humans into bug people. Lee Jun Young also told us that there was another place whose name was unknown. Breeder is a very careful person. He does not share the slightest information with his subordinates. However, there was one place that Lee Jun Hyung knew about without the breeder's knowledge. It was a place where finished insect human samples were collected. It was also called a farm. Professor Ji suspected that Breeder and Shin Gayan were in that place, but Professor Doyan still couldn't confirm it. But it was definitely one of their headquarters. Professor Doyan thinks that if they find out about the place, it is likely that they will be able to catch the leader. The place is located on an island called Black Island. The island wasn't very famous, but sometimes there were some tourists who came. The farm was hidden somewhere there, so they had to investigate first. Professor G will send some high-level students to go there. Then, Professor Doyan said that the dean ordered to send the best first-year students through the group tournament. Hearing this, Professor G immediately got up and kicked the table. He didn't agree with it because he thought they were still young. Moreover, why does it have to be first-year students? Professor Dohyeon explained that the upperclassmen were busy solving other problems. Moreover, this task was not dangerous because they were only there to investigate the island. According to Professor Dohyeon, there are many outstanding first-year students this year. In yesterday's incident, many of Professor G's students were also involved. The dean must want these students' skills to be honed as quickly as possible to maintain the nest's defenses. Professor Huan Yong also agreed with Professor Do Hyun's opinion. According to her, first-year students can also do the investigation. Being overprotective of the children was not good for them. Professor Huan Yong reminded him about the case of Shin Ga Yong who left this place. Professor Ji looked pensive thinking about it. It was unfortunate. But there was no reason for them to protect the students all the time. Compared to now, they should become stronger. Meanwhile, at a restaurant, there was He Jin who was feeling hot from eating spicy food. The woman was eating together with Su Chan. Su Chan immediately gave her a glass of water. The lunch was a form of reciprocation from Su Chan to He Jin. Su Chan felt bad for returning the favor with just this, but He Jin was okay with it. There was a very lively atmosphere in the hallway. Su Chen, who was visiting the place for the first time, was amazed to see it. He Jin told him that it was a place for ordinary people who didn't want to go to college, because they both want to enjoy a good life, even though they have become insect people. Then He Jin asked Su Chan about Hai Sung's whereabouts, because last night she didn't see Hai Sung in the room. Then Su Chan told her that Hai Sung was going home this weekend to meet his parents. Not long after that, Yung Dayun came along with Hyuna, who caught the two of them. Yung Dayun teased the two of them, who were like lovers. Then He Jin asked if they were here to eat Taeokboki. Yung Dayun told her that she said the lab was open, so they wanted to go there. Hearing the news made He Jin enthusiastic. She also invited Su Chan to come along. The research laboratory, also known as the lab, is where research is conducted. Researchers there also develop various equipment for students and agents. 
Their force jackets are also made there. Sometimes the lab is also opened for students. Equipment to protect their complex is made there. But if the lab is open to students, it's a sign that there will be a battle soon. A while later. Suchin and Hee Jin came to the research laboratory office of the Development Engineering Department. There were Yung Dayun and Bang Huna following behind them. Then they walked up to the woman guarding the information desk to register. Suchin looked around the place. He looked amazed at the amount of equipment and machines that were very luxurious. He Jin was also coming to the development department for the first time. Then Yung Dayun asked Su Chan about what tools he would list. But Su Chan is still hesitant and will follow them. Yung Dayun and Bang Huna will make a martial arts weapon. Bang Huna said that it is a weapon that can win against both of them. Jung Dayun remembered their first lecture where Su Chan helped them. They were both grateful, but they were also a little upset. At that time, Yung Dayun felt that she could not continue like this and had to become stronger, because if not, as Professor Ji said, they would just die. As Su Chan swallowed his saliva, he felt nervous. Those words made Su Chan realize that he also had to become stronger to be able to fight his powerful enemy. Sushin had finally decided what he was going to choose and eagerly approached the registration desk. Hei Jin did not expect to see Sushin's response. At first, Hee Jin thought that Sushin would be sad and not excited. Since they lost to the breeder and were still thinking about the unsaved children, Hee Jin wanted to encourage him again. However, Hee Jin realized that it seemed unnecessary. On the rooftop, Professor Ji and Professor Huang Geong were talking about the group tournament. Professor Huang Gong asked Professor Ji's opinion on who might win. Professor Huang Gong heard that many first-year students are unique. But Professor Ji didn't care about that. Even if they were the species with the best complex, it wouldn't affect whether they won or lost. It's the same with all creatures on Earth. When it comes to the game of survival, the one who strives to be stronger wins. In a quiet room filled with research objects, a man wearing a lab coat and holding a red clipboard entered the room. Instantly, the man was shocked to see the scene in front of him. The man found the breeder who was tying Shin Gaiyong's body with his net on a chair. The man asked what they were doing there. Breeder said that Shin Gaiyong suddenly wanted to kill him, so Breeder had no choice but to tie her up. But according to the man, it was still inappropriate for the breeder to treat a guest like that. Finally, Breeder listened to the man's words and then untied the rope. Breeder asked Shin Gaiyong to solve this problem through communication like adults. Shin Gaiyong immediately attacked Breeder by scraping the sharp tip of her tail against Breeder's forehead, injuring his face slightly. Shin Gaiyong said that she really wanted to punch Breeder's head, but because Shin Gaiyong felt that she owed Breeder a lot, she would let Breeder off for this incident. But Shin Gaiyong emphasized that if Breeder bothered her again, then Shin Gyeong would not hesitate to finish off Breeder. Shin Gaiyong looked very angry. Breeder suspected that Shin Gaiyong was angry because of something. Then Breeder said his apology if he had offended Shin Gaiyong. Then Breeder tried to calm Shin Gaiyong. He asked Shin Gaiyong to sit down, and Breeder would make tea for Shin Gaiyong as an apology. Breeder guessed that Shin Gaiyong seemed to be very emotional like that because she could not kill Professor Ji. Breeder became increasingly curious about what had happened to Shin Gaiyong five years ago at the nest. It was known that in her past, Shin Gaiyong had fought against Professor Ji, but she was unable to defeat Professor Ji. Shin Gaiyong considers Professor Ji like a monster. After that, Breeder approached Shin Gaiyong and gave her a glass of hot tea. Then Breeder asked Shin Gaiyong to tell him. Breeder said if he was willing to help Shin Gaiyong to kill Professor Ji. Then Shin Gaiyong asked in what way Breeder would help her. Previously, Shin Gaiyong had used students as bait, but that method did not work for Professor Ji. Shin Gaiyong thinks that Professor Ji and the others are not stupid people who can be trapped by such methods. Breeder told Shin Gaiyong that there were many other ways besides that. Breeder explained that the pill could make Shin Gaiyong secretly enter the nest like that time. According to Breeder, as long as Shin Gaiyong knows the location of the nest, Professor Ji will lose. Breeder said that if Shin Gaiyong could bring his men at will, Breeder added that Shin Gaiyong could just call what Shin Gaiyong needed. 
Hearing Breeder's offer made Shin Gaiyong surprised because she thought Breeder was very different. Shin Gaiyong did not expect Breeder to be kind to her. Shin Gaiyong thinks that when a man suddenly becomes kind to a woman, she thinks there is only one reason, which is because the man is in love, or there is another intention behind it. Breeder seemed to laugh a little after hearing Shin Gaiyong's words. It seems that Shin Gaiyong's suspicion is true, that there is another intention from Breeder. Elsewhere, Professor Ji is seen explaining something to his students. Professor Ji explained about an island called Black Island. This island is quite remote, the access is quite difficult to get out, and the population is small. Professor Ji said that if there was a group of people who attacked Nest some time ago, the group hid in a safe place called Pet Shop on Black Island. Professor Ji added that this place could be considered a gathering place for insect people like them. Professor Ji told his students that some of them would go there disguised as tourists, and to be the group that did this mission, they would do a group tournament. Then Professor Ji is seen explaining thoroughly to all his students. It seemed that Su was very ambitious to win the group tournament. According to Su if he couldn't win it, then his absence while helping Dowa could destroy his grades this semester. Su looked very trembling, however. He had to be chosen. Then Professor Ji explained the rules of the group tournament this time. They would be divided into four teams in the tournament. From each team, the winning team will move on to the next round and the winning team in the final round will be selected to do a special mission as an investigation team. Professor G said that in this tournament, there will be a battle. Team participants can fight the opposing team with their respective complexes. But team participants are prohibited from killing or severely injuring the opponent. The participants were very enthusiastic about participating in this group tournament. Professor G emphasized that what he meant was not fighting with resistance. As Professor G explained, this is a test to be selected as an investigation team. Each team would mark their area with a flag. The way for the team to win is to capture the flag of the opposing team. Participants cannot know the location of the opposing team, but if they can capture a member of the opposing team, they will get a GPS point of the location of the opposing team's headquarters. Professor G explained that this rule is a scenario that the participants could face as an investigation team later. The team that will run this scenario perfectly will be chosen as the investigation team. The club tournament is about to start. Group A and Group B will start the first round of the tournament. Then Professor G asked Group A and Group B to go to the training ground. As Group A and Group B have planted their team flags, the first round of the group tournament begins. Two people from Group B immediately ran towards Group A. It was seen that the group members were divided into two, namely as flag seekers and flag guards. Professor G explained that searching for the opponent's flag without a plan in such a large forest was an inefficient way. The most efficient way is like the second rule that Professor G has explained. They must find the opposing team members first, then capture them to find the GPS location of the opposing team's headquarters. Suddenly, Group B was ambushed by Group A, as a rather large explosion occurred. Group A was very surprised by the explosion. Dayun, who was a member of Group B, said that she had made a weapon to win against Group A. The weapon that Dayun used was in the form of a very large iron mace. He Jin said that if the weapon that Dayun used would not be able to hit her, He Jin could easily avoid Dayun's iron mace attack. Suddenly, both of Hee Jin's legs were wrapped in a silk net. It was discovered that the silk net belonged to Huna. Instantly, Hee Jin's entire body was bound, and she could not move at all. Seeing that Hee Jin was bound, Dayun quickly attacked Hee Jin with her iron mace. Hee Jin said that she wouldn't be able to dodge the attack, but Su Chan quickly helped Hee Jin before the iron mace hit Hee Jin's body. Dayun's weapon was quite powerful. Dayun told Heejin and Suchan that Heejin and Suchan's fighting experience was more than theirs. However, that didn't mean Suchan and his team could defeat them easily. Looking at the first round, Professor Ji said that Suchan and Heejin have been together since their first semester. Professor Ji thinks that individually, Suchan and Heejin might be stronger. However, as a team, Professor Ji thinks that Dayun and Huna are much stronger than them. The flag guards of Group A and Group B were eagerly awaiting the results of their matches. On the other hand, 
The battle between Sushan and He Jin against Dayun and Hyuna was very fierce. The atmosphere was getting interesting. Dayun and Hyuna were seen attacking Sushan and He Jin. They will prove in this tournament who will be the strongest. Jung Dayun threw an attack right at Sushan and He Jin. Instantly, there was a huge explosion that made Sushan and He Jin bounce far back. But fortunately, they were not hit by the object because their bones would have been cracked if they had hit it. He Jin told him that the woman was a spiny orb spider, or commonly known as a bolus spider. It had something like a sticky ball at the end of its web, and it would swing it towards its prey. Su Chen instantly remembered the breeder, which was also a species of spider. Then He Jin explained further that all spiders had one common weakness. The reason spiders use venom and their webs is to protect their weak physique. In other words, they are weak in physical combat. He Jin was instantly trapped by Bang Huna's attack. He Jin could not move because her body had been bound by a restraining suit made of silk thread. Bang Huna made sure that this time her prey would not be able to get out empty handed. Bang Huna is a species of silk moth, which is an adult form of silkworm that can produce original silk. Her silk web was stronger than what they had imagined. Su Chen, who saw that, screamed hysterically, calling He Jin. But He Jin assured Su Chen that she could tear it with her teeth. Instantly, Yung Dayun threw an attack at Su Chan that could cut the log. Luckily, Su Chen was not hit by the attack. Su Chen continued to run away from her. Su Chen didn't expect their strength to be like this, different from their strength during the first class. Now they could attack without the slightest gap. Then, Bang Huna would put the handcuffs on He Jin's hands for Ness to tell them the location of her opponent's flag. They would end this quickly. As Bang Huna approached He Jin, He Jin suddenly managed to free herself. Now He Jin would become more serious to fight the two of them. The look on Bang Huna's face and also Jang Dayun's is very frightening to see. Bang Huna wondered how He Jin could escape. Then Jung Dayun immediately threw her gun at He Jin. Instantly, He Jin pulled out the weapon she made in the lab. It was a special weapon designed specifically for her complex. Around it were sharp thorns like cockroach legs. With that weapon, the ball thrown by Yung Dayun was shattered into pieces. He Jin took out the combat knuckles, skill, black thorns. Yung Dayun looked surprised and wondered what kind of power He Jin had. Then Yung Dayun ordered Huna to immediately make another silk net. But because she was nervous, Huna took a long time to make it. At that moment, Su Chen immediately took action. Su Chen flew very quickly towards Yung Dayun. Although she wasn't wearing her glasses now, Su Chen knew the trick by now. Su Chen didn't want to hurt Yung Dayun, but Su Chen had to win. Professor Ji, who saw the incident, looked panicked. With Su Chen using his defense mechanism, Professor Ji thought that his opponent could die. But Su Chen used the hunting rifle skill, Blank Bullets. It was a way that would only scare his opponent by using his complex. Then, Su Chen handcuffed Yung Dayun's hands. As a result, Yung Dayun was eliminated, and Team B's position was revealed. The rest of their colleagues who saw the scene from behind the screen were amazed at the prowess of the transfer student who had managed to catch one person. Meanwhile, Professor Ji was silent as Su Shan watched closely. He saw Su Shan stop just before colliding with a swooping flight technique that only dragonflies could do. However, he thinks the mechanism still looks unstable. But Professor Ji heard that Su Chen had also made something in the lab. Meanwhile, Bang Huna looked very panicked and scared because she only lived alone. Then Huna immediately ran away from that place. He Jin, who saw Huna running away, immediately chased her. But suddenly, Huna ran towards the edge of the cliff and then fell because her foot slipped. Suddenly, He Jin quickly caught her. Unexpectedly, it was just a trick from Hyuna to trick He Jin. They both fell down the cliff. Hyuna knew that it was He Jin who had returned their ID cards. Hyuna realized that He Jin was a very responsible person as class president, and also had a kind heart to all classmates. At first, Hyuna didn't want to take advantage of her good nature, but Hyuna also wanted to win. Then, Hyuna immediately put handcuffs on her hands. As a result, Park He Jin was eliminated and the location of Group A was revealed. Fortunately, they both survived because they fell on a cocoon made by Huna. Professor G concluded that it was now a one-on-one -on -one match. 
he was surprised to see that the guard team of Group B was not there. Then Sushan would hurry up because he already knew the location of Group B. Haisung immediately called Suchan. Haisung said that they were done because the boys had arrived at their place. Hearing that, Suchan didn't seem to believe it. Hei Jin was only eliminated two minutes ago. Haisung guessed that it looked like they were around here. Haisung was sure that they must have left their location, and all the members were tasked with finding the opponent's location. Haisung tried his best to hold them off, but his condition was not good. Haisung was desperate and thought that they would lose. Su Chan didn't just stand by, he got straight into the action. Su Chan immediately ran to find his weapon, which he had hidden behind a tree. According to Su Chan, this is still not over, and he will tackle this problem. 